All right, so we are now live, and oh boy, it is a very exciting day. Um, my name is Landon Rivers. I will be your host today as we go through reminiscing with two of the original developers of the game Enclave, which came out in 2002. With us today, we have Jens Andersen and Jens Mateis. And uh, they will be sharing their memories, their thoughts, all that went into it. Uh, this is the first game that both of them have actually shipped together. It was a big learning experience. And uh, there really isn't too much material out there in terms of the making of this game. But uh, as those in the community know, there was quite a lot that went into it. And so this is going to be a, a very important stream um, where, where we just get to, to learn a, a lot of what they went through. Um, for those who are game developers and those who are maybe aspiring game developers, this, this might be uh, very helpful to you to, to kind of learn uh, where they started and some of the challenges that, that uh, they went through and all the uh, iterations that Enclave went through. It's, it's uh, very, very exciting today um, so uh, also to mention as you may see in the bottom corner this uh, stream is being sponsored by Ziggurat Interactive. We are going to have a, a raffle for their re-release of the game that they are going to have on modern consoles and I'll have more about that later. Um, so that is something to look forward to. Um, so before we get into that uh, let me do a little bit of an introduction of the game for those who may not be familiar with it. Uh, I'll just have some flavor video in the background as I read a couple paragraphs of text. So, uh, Enclave is a game where uh, hundreds of years have passed since the High Wizard Zael saved the people of Selenheim from the brink of defeat by the evil armies of Dregatar through creating a massive rift around their lands to permanently separate these forces of good and evil. Now the rift is closing and it is up to a band of unlikely heroes to rise up and fight. Will they succeed in their quest to fight for light and slay the demon king Vatar, Or will the minions of darkness take Selenheim for the forces of evil? So Enclave, as you can see here, is a third-person action RPG with intense medieval combat, an epic soundtrack, and two separate story-driven campaigns which have the player fighting for the forces of light or darkness. Um, each faction offers six distinct character options and uh, like the, the knights, wizards, and druids on the side of light and berserkers, assassins, and goblins as the servants of darkness. You can wield swords, magic, and bows to wage war on your enemies and decide Selenheim's future. Uh, so that's just a, a little bit about the game. Um, and so now I'd, I'd like to uh, introduce our guests that we have with us. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce uh, Jens Andersen. Uh, both of these guys are, are based out of Sweden. They they originally joined uh, uh, Starbreeze Studios, which which uh, uh, produced this game. Um, so Jens Andersen, he was the lead programmer, game designer, and uh, project manager for Enclave. Uh, Jens Andersen, he, he became a founding member of Starbreeze Studio in 1998. There he held multiple key roles within programming, design, and management, as well as a seat at Starbreeze's steering board, producing multiple AAA titles. He later did some work with Lucas Arts in San Francisco, and then he was able to find, uh, found his own uh, game studio, Collecting Smiles, where he developed and published games all on his own. More recently, he co-founded the game studio Villa Gorilla with another Starbreeze veteran, which released the award-winning Yoku's Island Express. Thank you very much for joining us, Jens Andersen. Um, and Thank also, you. also with us, we have uh, Jens Mateis. Uh, Jens Mateis joined um, Starbreeze Studios in 1998 as well, and he held a role in producing amazing art from the beginning. After Enclave, he held art director and creative director roles, also contributing to story writing, cinematics, audio, and voice acting direction. Um, Jens co-founded Machine Games alongside other original Starbreeze team members and played a key role as a creative director. And then for the last decade, he has been developing uh, Wolfenstein games. Thank you very much for joining us, Jens Mates. Thank you very much. Okay, so, um, <laughs> boy, we sure have a, a, a lot that we can we can get through today. Um, <laughs> how to begin? 
how to begin. Thank you very much. Um, so this is going to be, as, as, I, as I mentioned, a, a very uh, casual stream. We're also going to to um, have a little bit of a, of a session where I, I, I speed run through the game and show you all the fun ways that uh, we broke your game <laughs> and uh, were able to beat it in some amazing times. Um, but yeah, so there is a, a, a lot that we can cover and, and uh, talk about. First, um, let's actually, I want to show off just a little bit of a, a retrospective slide, a little bit of a history for Enclave. Uh, so Enclave was uh, developed by Starbreeze Studios. It was released for the Xbox in 2002, PC for the two, for, uh, in 2003, and uh, was later... Um, uh, acquired by by Topware, where they did a bunch of uh, HD re-releases on Steam and uh, the Wii and uh, a whole lot of places. And uh, now that's where Ziggurat is coming in, is they have the, the license under Topware to create the modern console version for it. So a lot of publishers involved. Uh, they have uh, Ogier as the the, uh, the engine that they, they created. It was Starbreeze proprietary, later released to the public in 2004, where we had all sorts of fun with it. Uh, so that's kind of what went into it. But man, that's... Uh, it was a long time ago. It was a long time. It was like, what, 19 years about? Yeah, next, next year is going to be the 20th anniversary. That's pretty. That's that's weird. something. Yeah, yeah. So I was uh, I was 12 years old when this game came out, and that is a very impressionable age. And so that is why, uh, in terms of nostalgia, this is one of the games that really stuck with me uh, on on the Xbox. I was absolutely uh, obsessed with uh, Enclave when I was when I was a kid. Um, and so why? What did you play on? With, uh, on on Xbox. Yeah. Xbox. Yeah. Got Xbox. I've still got it under me. I've got uh, my my big controller here. Oh, still nice! Down nice. <laughs> yeah, and I've got uh, I've got the boxes for everything right here. I've got uh, here it is the uh, NTSC version that originally oh, came nice. out on Xbox. Yeah, so uh, that is something. I believe okay. uh, Per Tingström did that cover, who was also a modeler. Uh, made a bunch of the character model models yeah. for the game. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, so I guess one thing that we could start this out with is kind of how you guys got into Star Breeze Studios. So I know they were doing a lot of hiring back in 1998. And uh, do you remember what it was the the project that they were? wanting to have you guys work on. I know that there was a guy, uh, Magnus, and I think he was in charge of it at the time, and was he yeah. the one who created the Ogier right. engine? Um, yes, sort of. Uh, so Magnus founded Starbreeze and was uh, kicking off a new project that was called Sorcery. Um, and me and Mattis had our different way in, into that. And it's actually, the engine is not named Ogier. That was the tool set uh, to create content for the engine. Ah. So we just call, the engine is just called Starbreeze engine or something. I don't think we had a proper name for it. Um, but for for my trip into it, I, I, I had gotten to know Magnus through mutual friends. And then while I, I was at university, I sort of helped him with some code here and there for fun. Uh, and then he basically sent me a, a job offer once he was ready to to properly found Starbreeze um, back in yeah in ninety eight. So I think we were like seven people or so on location already before the company was even formed. Um, and you were also also there quite early, right, Matis? Yeah, uh, you you were. But but did did you build? Uh, did you build Ogier? Uh, I, I built Ogier, Magnus yeah, the, the yeah, tool set. So, so Magnus yeah. is the genius behind the, the engine, like the, the, the 3D engine that was really spectacular for its time. Uh, and I came in as, as programmer number two, basically, and uh, started We never got with... to programmer three. <laughs> yeah, we never hired programmer number three. <laughs> that was a standing <laughs> joke as well. Yeah. It was always and, his fault that we did that we missed the deadlines. Coder number three. 
programmer three. So yeah. uh, the way it was, Magnus had. Uh, were you active on the demo scene as well? Yes, so back in the yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, a little uh, bit. Uh, for PC or for what platform? Uh, I mostly did Amiga, actually. Ah, okay. So uh, back in the, I guess, early nineties, then I was involved in the demo scene for the Atari. Uh, for our demo group was called Scum of the Earth. Uh, and Beautiful we, name. We, there, there was a big conflict between Atari and Amiga in Sweden back then. I don't, I don't know if Atari and Amiga were big in the US. I don't think so. I think it was mostly okay. PC or whatever. I know, I know Atari <laughs> back in the day, yeah. Okay, all right. So anyway, Amiga was better. I can say that in, in retrospect. But I would never admit it at the time. It was actually better. Um, but uh, uh, suddenly the PC kind of took over because uh, you had these these very vibrant and, and competent gaming machines, which were the Atari and the Amiga. Suddenly the PC and the PC was like business shit. Nobody cared about it. It was horrible. It had 16 colors. Couldn't be used for anything fun. But then suddenly that shifted, and all of the coolest demos. Uh, if you don't know what a demo is, I don't blame you, but it's basically some kind of tech, art tech display. You you kind of show off your skills by doing some visual uh, artistry uh, with the machine, uh, usually in combination of code and art. I've got, yeah, um, I've got some uh, tech demo videos stowed away for sorcery and all <laughs> that that we could show off. Yeah, but those are more like games and game engine. It's a different thing, but anyway. Uh, but yeah, we should definitely look at that. Uh, the uh, so, yeah. So anyway, so, suddenly the PC started to dominate the demos because the shit they did on PC was way cooler than what could be done on on, a, on an Atari or an Amiga. Uh, and the big boss in doing that stuff was Magnus Högdal and his demo group, which was called Triton. Triton, and Triton then went on to make uh, games in LA, I believe. Um, Into the Shadows was the precursor for everything before yeah. before Starbreeze. They did. Into yeah, the no, Shadows, I'm sure th never, this is never shipped. On it never shipped, but it, the, the story goes that the Triton people uh, were working kind of Ill illegally in LA because they didn't have work permits or something, and they took their their demo of Into the Shadows to E3. Um, and it was like one back then we didn't have flat screens, so it was like a CRT, a small CRT on one screen was into the shadows. The demo was playing on it, and there was like a huge line because it was so totally mind blowingly cool. Uh, and this was pre Quake, but post Doom, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so it was like something they... in between Doom and Quake, I suppose. Yeah, constantly during the the development of actually both sorcery uh, that uh, got canned and then uh, that sort of partly turned into Enclave, we were sort of in a arms race with id Software's uh, yeah. engine. So Which Magnus, <laughs> yeah, that Magnus was the, the tech wizard when <laughs> yeah when John Mar John Carmack posted something about some new technique or something. Magnus stayed up all night, and and in the morning he said, "Come look at this," and he showed yeah. some dynamic shadows or uh, some Lines. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, he, Magnus finally won when we shipped Riddick with uh, normal maps before it shipped Doom Three. Yeah, yeah. I, w I was about to uh, to ask about that. I the the normal maps and how that was uh, totally new tech and and. Uh, Escape from yeah. Butcher Bay was one of the first ones to to, to use that. And, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So it it came up with it, I believe. I don't know. It came up with it, but they were certainly the channel through which we learned about it. But then we were able to kind of kind of outcompete them for once in that regard. Anyway, so uh, I was in the demo scene, and then I finished school and I under realized that I had to get a real job so I started working at a newspaper in kind of the photography department there but I was always very into games was playing a lot of Quake and Quake was cool because you could modify it so I was doing a lot of mods um, for that uh, working with well I was mainly I guess just doing 
textures for it. Um, and then uh, I started applying to game companies and I, I saw that there was this new one in Sweden called Starbreeze and the screenshots they had looked totally amazing, like it looked unbelievable, uh, this game that they were working on. And so I started applying there with my textures. Um, and, and the first stuff I sent in was because back then it was, it could go either, like in some ways it was more uh, kind of classy to kind of paint your textures. Uh, but for uh, sorcery, uh, Magnus was very adamant that it should be like photorealistic. And so it was great that I was working in this photography department because I had access to cameras. Back then, they, the, the digital cameras wasn't good yet. They had appeared, but they were super shitty. Uh, but I had these amazing um, film cameras or film, I don't know what you call them. When it's, it's, it's like um, SLRs, right? But, uh, but they have film, they don't have, they're not digital. So I could go out and make photographs out of, you know, some old brick wall or whatever. And I could turn that into a texture and I could submit that as kind of samples of my work. Got it. And then, then I also start, got into kind of building levels using this program called Worldcraft, which was for Quake. Uh, and it wasn't that hard to kind of port Worldcraft maps over to Ogier. Yeah, it was built on the same concepts, actually shared uh, file formats uh, to some yeah. extent early on. Yeah, so it was like BSP stuff. Uh, so I could submit some of that work as well. I just played around with it. But anyway, that was enough. So I uh, started working long distance in 98 and then towards the very end of 98, maybe at this time of year, actually, uh, I moved to Hanesand, which is... It's my hometown. That, yeah, and I, Dark, I thought... Dark, cold place in Sweden. I thought it would be uh, way up north, and it feels like way up north, but it's actually kind of in the middle of Sweden. <laughs> A little bit north, I suppose. And that's when we kind of all converged, and we were in the same location. And we started working on this game called Sorcery, and we had no idea what we were doing, uh, but everyone on the team was very good. So we were individually capable of producing like cool looking shit that was cooler than what was out there, but we were not so good at tying it into something that was playable and fun. Yeah. Do you, do you guys want to wanna, game, yeah. you guys wanna take a look yeah. at the, the technical demo that, uh, that, we, sure. that we've got? Yeah, so let's take... Let's take a look at that. When did you see this last, Matis? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, I built this. Yeah, this this is oh, uh, I this like too. it. I, I think this is from a video that we put together to try to save the project, to show it to our publisher how cool it was. And it didn't work out, but it turned out to be a nice show reel for what our, cap uh, what our engine was capable of doing. So yeah, most of this stuff is actually built by you, Matthias, right? Yeah, yeah. Lots of splines, as you can see, which was this isn't like me, really though. big at the time. No, I think this is Yarek. Yeah, yeah. Or Yarek. Oh, yeah, it could be me then, yeah. Okay. So this was this like Skyrim-esque RPG, way, way, way too big for our capabilities, but we believe it was it. so insanely ambitious. Oh, this I built as well. <laughs> uh, it was so, oh yeah, I built this. This was the cool thing about the splines. You could do, do this semi-organic shapes. So uh, I made this snake tunnel thing. And here's yeah. something I made. I made the particle system down below. Yep. <laughs> oh, nice. I'm a programmer. I didn't get to do much visual stuff. And it was so cool. We had and look at the reflections on the water there. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Uh, I know I know how tricky particle systems can be. I'm I'm in a another big nostalgic community thing, and it, they're recreating a game from scratch, and and the particle systems are the 
one of one of the biggest uh, hurdles. Um, but uh, but this this video also shows kind of what we had and what we didn't have. Mm. As you can see, there was no gameplay there. Uh, it was just beautiful environments, and that's sort of what we had with sorcery uh, at the end. Uh, so there there was that's... there was a a lot of uh, world building that you guys have done, and I and we do also have uh, some some screenshots from it. Oh, I'll just show off the one. We've got uh, this screenshot here. Let me make it a little bigger. That's uh... oh, I don't recognize. Yeah, that so it actually looks like gameplay, doesn't it? Yeah, it's got it's got health. It's got uh, looks like R U B G and P. I don't know what that means, but uh, fire firebolt we spell level five, four. I think five types of magic or something. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but then also just to point out is that um, there's the the bridge right there, which is right. very familiar, which got uh, reused into uh, Enclave on the... Oh, uh, did it? Jacindra. Yeah, let me we show didn't, you. We, I don't think we had permission to do that, did we? Oh. If you put up that screen again. So here's... Uh, this is this is uh, from Ark Moor. And so there's the asset. Oh, right yeah. Yeah, it's, so, it's uh, conceptually similar. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's bent a little again, bit. Landon? Landon, can you put that screenshot up again? Sure. Uh, so if you'll see here, we uh, we didn't have we had a bunch of animations, but we didn't have them working in game because that was programmer three's job. So <laughs> most most characters are the kind of standing in this T pose. Uh, so the, in all of the sorcery screenshots, basically everyone is team posing, uh, and I believe I built that bridge with the with the rib the rib cage stuff. I don't think I built the, any anything else in this room, but I believe I built that bridge. Got it. Um, and also one thing that I wanted to point out is with the map that you guys had for the game. Um, right here we have the map for Enclave. And if I make this a little smaller, here we have a picture of the Ooh, map that you guys had for sorcery. And so we're thinking if you look up near the, the northern lands area where it has kind of a big volcano, it's got the, the sea across, uh, we see some similarities. And, and we're kind of like wondering, is it maybe maybe they, uh, they piggybacked off each other and that helped uh, influence the map of the Enclave world. Yeah, it was weird because... Uh, maybe you have more detailed memory on this. No, I don't don't remember this at all. <laughs> and the way I remember it was uh, Gustav Grefberg, uh, who now works with Josef Fares, uh, I believe. Ace Light. Yeah. Uh, Ace Light is the name. Um, he did like the story and the lore around these things. Um, so uh, we, he did all of this for sorcery, had tons and tons of material. Um, and then when Sorcery got cancelled, we kind of had to re reassess and figure out what the hell are we going to do. And that's when we started drifting into more because we were playing a lot of Quake and we loved it. And we thought maybe we should make more of a competitive multiplayer game uh, and maybe introduce some science fiction aspects to that. So, so we we're kind of working down a trajectory. But meanwhile, the material that we used to try and get a new publishing deal with some publisher was kind of sorcery stuff. Um, so yeah. when they when that happened and they said we want you to make Enclave, uh, we but we don't want this whatever you're doing now, <laughs> not the <laughs> the, uh, the quake like stuff. We want this third person uh, uh, kind of fantasy thing. Um, then uh, yeah, so we had to one eighty again, or I guess not one eighty, but yeah, forty five at part least. It was partly due to the, the platform, like the publisher we talked to was really into doing an Xbox game. Um, and for Xbox first person shooters, like the Xbox wasn't even released yet, but there was no, like you couldn't do first person shooters on console right. because Halo hadn't been released yet. Uh, no Halo, so, no Call of Duty. So it was yeah. impossible. It was a total non-starter. Well, has has so to be third person. Has to be third person, yeah. Um, and I guess they like the fantasy stuff more. So we sort of pivot uh, towards that. Yeah, yeah. It... And, and, and Gustav also made kind of the story and the lore for Enclave. So I think there was a lot of similarities there, probably. 
in, in kind of designing that uh, world. Got it. Yeah, yeah, same team. You get similar results, I guess. Did yeah. you guys uh, want to see the video of Enclave Classic, the shooter <laughs> game? Oh, do it. Gotta... Okay, here we go. Oh, that's an early version of the logo, Starbeast logo. Yeah. All right. That looks like Tom Fritzson's model, and the first one looked like Pella's model. I'm just gonna guess. Yeah. Look at that. User interface. Health, rocket launcher, ammo. And the machine cool there, I remember working machines. on that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you yep. get crushed in it. Oh, you get oh, oh yeah. you get crushed in it. Okay, so there. Oh, and I had just just seen the movie Fight Club, uh, and I love it so much. It's still on my top ten of movies of all time. So when I put this trailer together, I used this, or I tried to mimic kind of a shot in that in that <laughs> movie, which is towards the end, and this whole. That kind of text on the screen pane is just weakness leaving your body or whatever. That's, uh, I'm sure that's in other countries as well, but it's also a Swedish kind of military thing. When the, that's when what they the, say in the Swedish military? Yeah, when the recruits are... <laughs> no, I guess it wasn't in that one. Or maybe it was earlier on. Maybe it was in the oh, beginning and I missed it. There was a, a, a few fun stuff in that video. One was the machine, I think, uh, because we used a lot of that stuff in Enclave later on. Uh, yeah. The second yep. one, which was just in one shot, I think, was a, uh, a portal, like a, like a mirror. And that was one of those typical things that uh, Magnus had, had seen someone else do. And we need to have that in our game and staying up all night. And suddenly we could have mirrors and portals in, in the yeah. game. And was we could like shoot, shoot, through the, shoot through them and stuff. Yeah, was it the original Prey or something that had these portals? I don't remember where it came from. I think so. It was, it was like original, original, original Prey before, long before, because that oh, yeah, game yeah. took like seven years before they turned it into a game or something. I don't remember. Yeah. But yeah, no, that that whole thing, uh, that dem, that video that that you showed, that was done by the team after we got canned by the publisher for sorcery. Everyone went to the unemployment office to get sort of the welfare check and said, yeah. like, we, we need jobs, but we'd rather work for ourselves. Is that OK? And since there w weren't any jobs for computer nerds at the time, they said, sure, make your game. At least you are doing something. And then we <laughs> yeah. went away for, for six months uh, to do this demo and then managed to find uh, a publisher. Oh my god. And we also <laughs> got acquired by another company. That's also yeah. important to note. Yeah. Yeah, there was the 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 merger um early on. What Those was that? Three called? games, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yep, that's what that's yeah, what it so, was. So so what happened was we we uh, we we weren't really comfortable in Hannerson, partly because it's insanely cold and windy, and those two are not a great combination. Uh, but also because it was hard to recruit for Hanusand. Uh, it was hard to get people to move there and work for us. Uh, so we thought we should move to some other location. We looked around, like, what city would be a good candidate? And everybody kind of liked Uppsala uh, because it's big-ish, but not too big. I'm talking Swedish standard here now, so not big in, in an objective sense, but for Sweden. Um, uh, and it's close to Stockholm, but it's not too big and, and crowded. But it's also and, important to yeah. remember at this, this time, like we were, I don't know, in our early 20s, all of us, no one had any family. This was our family. Like half of the studio lived in the same uh, house. They rented a house together and lived there. And basically, this is where we spent all the time at the office or if we weren't at the office, we were doing something together, being at the pub or whatever. So we could have that kind of discussion. Where should we move? Almost like a family, which was kind of right. weird. Oh my God. Yeah, which would be not possible these days. But <laughs> back then, yeah, that was a total possibility. And we, and we loved it so much. And we would like work 18 hours and then sometimes sleep 
under the desk, but you know the the normal computer nerd stuff. Uh, <laughs> the normal, but but then uh, they, yeah. So and and so uh, Magnus was thinking about like how how to salvage the company now that the paychecks aren't coming anymore because uh, they canned the sorcery game, which at the time we thought was unbelievably weird because it was clearly so amazing. But in retrospect, that was probably a right the right move because. It wasn't playable in any way. It was just basically cool tech and visuals. Yeah. But then they, uh, yeah. So we had this offer from a company called U3 Games uh, in Uppsala to basically, and and we were really impressed with them because they had shipped the game, and we had no idea how to ship. Like that was magic to us. And they liked our stuff because it was kind of high quality in, in terms of tech and art. Um, so we were, so, and they were based in Uppsala, maybe I said that, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so that's what we went with. So we merged with Ute Games, and that was a, quite an experience too. Yeah, so. yeah, it was super weird. But it was basically those two things happening at the same time, like the merger with O3 Games and moving the studio to a different city. And then in parallel, uh, there had been negotiations with a publisher, Conspiracy Entertainment, who were interested in doing um, an Xbox game with us uh, and liked sort of, sort of like the direction of Enclave, but wanted to take it like, we don't want a first person shooter, we want a third person hack and slash. Like, Sort of the same game. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so there was a big culture clash when we merged with O3 Games. They were a few more people than us, as I recall. We were like eight, nine people or something when we. I think we were up. only six who moved, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, that might be true. Um, and they were, let's say, 12. I don't know. I don't remember how many, but. It was a pretty small team, but obviously we had completely different cultures and, and we knew each other really well and they knew each other really well. And we kind of uh, looked up to each other in different ways and looked down at each other in different ways. Uh, but yeah, so that took a couple of years before we kind of really coalesced as one unit. They, until they renamed the company to Starbreeze and we won. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 exactly. Uh, once uh, the company was named Starbreeze, then all hatchets were buried. No, no it was good, and and the, that were there were some amazing people we met there, and uh, obviously Enclave is a product of both of those teams kind of coming together and making a game. Got it. Yeah, and so one of the things that's really interesting and has generated a lot of uh discussion in uh, you see it a lot in in the 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 steam community forums for for enclave is people talking about how the original concept for it was to be all multiplayer and um and and a lot of people are are we're looking into ways to try and, you know, like reverse engineer the system and try and bring that back out. Um, and uh, I, I've even got a, I've got a video of the original multiplayer concept. And when I was watching it, I just kind of, I, I just got this, this idea of like, this, this would have been so cool as, as multiplayer. And, and as I understand it, um, because there was a, a deadline that needed to be met, it would, it would just be easier for it to get changed into a single player game uh, from the multiplayer um, design. Is that correct? Well, it's super hard to make a multiplayer game, I think, is the, the, especially at that time. And for us, uh, it was just would have been a much more high risk project unless oh, we right. really stripped it down to like what we showed in the video was like really core quake like experience either the, you do that or you do like a, a much bigger something you could sell like in in a box which, which is what the publisher right. wants to have like yeah it, it's just a very different type of product and it, it would be very hard to do both i guess I don't have any memory of us do of uh, us attempting to do 
the publisher financed version of Enclave multiplayer. Did we do no, that or did we no, think that, about it? Well, that's what we tried to present. That's what we tried to yeah, sell. Yeah, that's what we that's wanted we, to do. So, yeah, so yeah we, that, that was we said we want to do this Quake-like thing. And then they say, no, we want third person hack and slash. But yeah, and, and they said like, no, we want to do a console game. Like online is not big on console. Like it's, you put right. a disc in and you sit there with your console. Like online right. is, is this PC thing that people are talking yeah. about. You need a dial up modem and things. Do you guys want hey, to take hey. a look at the video? Sure. Okay. You... Which one? For the multiplayer. Ah, I don't know what it is. What? this is. That's swing. This is conspiracy. Or... Yep. That's oh, conspiracy. Yeah. yeah. It just has them at the, the very beginning. And then. Enclave multiplayer prototype. Okay. I wonder who made this video. Maybe it was Jan or someone. Likely. All right. What the heck was this? Right, no, this, this isn't multiplayer. This is just because we didn't have AI yet. Uh, we had to stage everything uh, with uh, people had to kind of drive the characters and do shit. Ah. That's what I think this is. I'm pretty Maybe. sure that's the case. But, you know, Although I, that siege I, thing, I wouldn't be uh, surprised if we wanted to do this still. Um, early on in the I development. I mean, this, yeah, I don't know. I think oh, we were just, is... I think this is like an E3 trailer or something, and, and we put it together for just as a video, and the only way we could create some kind of action was for, to kind of have pe real people drive the characters around and do shit, because the AI didn't exist, so uh, we couldn't actually, yeah. the game wasn't playable, that's what I think. So as you notice, like this was 20 years ago and we don't remember shit about this stuff. But, like this is the <laughs> first time we are seeing the game, seeing these videos for a very long time. It's it's all a blur. So don't expect But I, I remember no working answers. on this video. Yeah, I, I remember I, the video. I think I put this video together and we had, uh, it was just a nightmare to try and get all of these uh, game developers to uh, do what what's needed for the shot. <laughs> so I'm like flying around in no clip, placing the camera somewhere, and then you know it's like you five guys do this, you five do this, and then of course they just start messing around and everything goes to shit. So very hard to herd those cats into formation. Oh, I don't know. I I think you personally, I think you are right. There was a thought about doing multiplayer early on, uh, but it's probably got that idea probably got stamped out pretty quickly once we realized the scope of the project. Uh, yeah. But it's possible we tried to sell that idea somehow because we had like the whole engine was built for multiplayer and that was kind of a technical mishap for every game that we made because we had the like we wanted to do a multiplayer game, but in the end we all did single player and we had to write all the code to support multiplayer, which was very complicated because you needed to support like the prediction and latency and all that kind of stuff. It would have been Darkness so much easier. What's that? Darkness, Darkness. had multiplayer. Oh, right, right. Uh, sure. It was great, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> but like, <laughs> the games would have been better if, if we didn't have, uh, if we wouldn't have aimed to have a multiplayer engine. That's what I believe, at least. Uh, Got it. I think you're right about I th that. I think, like, if if we took Enclave as, as it is, a, a lot of the, the systems could hold up pretty well into a, a multiplayer system. Like, the way that you're buying equipment, you could just have uh, gold allotted to each team or whatever, and then just, okay, yeah, use this to pick your... Yeah, Counter-Strike style. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, um, and also from that video I, I was thinking like oh if this is if this is multiplayer that was the divided city map which you know we're looking at right now in the background and um divided city is by far my favorite map it's got like three branching paths or or so that uh go around it and you up down or over around it's it's very complex i i love the design of uh, divided city and from watching that video I, i'm like 
this would be a perfect multiplayer map and so <laughs> it's uh yeah i i i think that that would be just so fun to to have a death match on on enclave and um we were discussing on the community is like oh well if it was and we had the the characters as is who would be you know like the cheap one who would be the character that uh people would pick because right. they'd be easy and um yeah so so a lot of that um yeah, so so there wasn't just uh, the iterations on what the actual game was, but then then you actually got into the development of single player enclave as is and, and shipping that out, and there were a lot of uh, iterations on on models, uh, and characters, and all that. Um, one uh, w one of the the more prominent ones, you look in the code everywhere, and and uh, you see. You don't see halfling, you see boar rider. You don't see goblin, you see wolf rider. And so, like, that was that was just uh, really interesting. Like, let's see, I've got a yeah, picture. Because, of course, we have these visions, right? We want them to ride wolves and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the... Cool. They kind of kind of look ever, like boars. Did we ever get that to work? No. I don't know. I don't think no. so. Or yeah. did we? I don't know. These these are not uh, in game. It's way too complicated. And um, I was yeah. just kind of like, one, like the character. What was the idea for the character? Would they just always be on the boar for the entire level as you go through it, or something? It just seems a little impractical no, I, here. Well, I assure you that the ideas are always extremely complicated and cool and <laughs> not possible to execute. <laughs> so it's like. I guarantee that you know they could jump on them and off them and do all kinds of cool shit, whatever we could dream up. But of course, once but Coder three actually... never showed up to make it happen. <laughs> Coder, fucking Coder three. Coder three. <laughs> no, but once we merge with O three, then we definitely had Coder three. Yeah, we had more. Five. <laughs> yeah. And, and really we great. We got Coder too, three, yeah. and now yes. we could finally blame somebody for this. <laughs> Uh, anyway yeah so yeah but that's always the case you have grander a grander scope in your mind than you're able to produce in reality but it's much better that way than the other way around uh, so got it okay um but, uh, yeah i don't know for me personally i um i uh, I believe i don't think i built so many i, I basically stopped doing uh any real level design once we started making enclave or building levels and i was just m much t much more focused on the texture work because uh, i don't think there was anyone really at the company that was specialized on on textures the way i was uh, but there were many people who could build levels so or many but several at least got it um, but that's that's my kind of my proudest thing about the game is that every level you every texture you see inside a level uh, I made that texture uh, not for the characters but everything in in the levels. Um, so like the the sky we see and the moon above it and was that that was you as well? I believe so. Yeah, and I I, I took a lot of picture. The, the tricky thing about because it's all kind of photography based. But everything you see here, like the, the walls and the, the floors and all of those textures. And for clouds, I had to do a lot of tricky shit because when you take a picture of clouds from the ground, they're kind of close to you. Um, so it's hard to get. And what that results in is like one big cloud and it doesn't look good. You want tons of small clouds, right? And the way I found out to get that was whenever I took a plane trip uh, if I took a picture from above down at the clouds instead because they're so way 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 up uh, high in an airplane when it's at cruising altitude um, then you're able to capture a lot more cloud <laughs> coverage from above than you are from below so oh, this, this this cloud that you see moving there was photographed from an airplane and then you have to it's tricky because you have to kind of separate the cloud from the ground beneath it or the water beneath it, depending on where the picture is taken. Uh, and you want to do that in a way that you don't get this. Uh, it's a, a, there's some trickery involved in making that look <laughs> good, basically. Uh, but, Got it. Uh, yeah. 
that's what you see there. All right, and um, also, so like I know that the we we, we mentioned that the the normal maps that that was used for Chronicles of Riddick: Escape from Butcher Bay. Uh, so what was being used before that? Is it were the bump maps and height maps? Was that a thing? No, that's just straight textures. Just so straight these, textures. These are just images, yeah. And light uh, maps, of course. Light maps, yeah. Yeah. Got that, it. Okay. That shade shades them, but uh, but there's no there's no kind of faked depth in them. It's just photographs basically. Or, uh, but of course, yeah, there's tons of work in in making them kind of tile and and uh, look cohesive and, and good or whatever. But um, but there's no there's no 3D component of them. So, Landon, do you have a, a, a clip from the absolute first room in the game? The the first room? The, the cell. Oh, uh, I don't have one of those so on here. This, this is one of my memories from, from uh, Matti's work in particular. The floor in that cell, if I remember correctly, has this big etching. And that's something you manually painted for three days or something that texture do you guys yeah, want me to, do you guys want me to go in game actually i could i could yeah sure i could sure, boot sure. up the game and then we'll we'll go through that that'll be fun okay um okay i'm gonna switch over to our slick play screen now bird transition that was fun to make okay so i'm gonna boot up the game now and who actually made that animation of the bird and who built the bird was Lars Johansson, who is now the managing director at Machine Games. All of this stuff he rendered in Lightwave, is that what it was called? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, also, one of the things about uh, this game, since, you know, hardware has advanced through the days, I actually have two mice uh, at my desk. I've got uh, this mouse right here, just a Microsoft optical mouse, and then the one I'm using, you know, the Corsair one. I have to use this old one because the polling nice. rate on the mouse is uh, it's it's a lower. Otherwise, if I'm using the, the nice mouse right here, so here we are in the first room, I do that, I can run really fast. <laughs> and so I, I have to use the uh, the other mouse in order to, to get it to work. Ooh, let's move you to the side there. Oh, got to And we should be good. Okay, cool. So here we are in the first room. Let's open up no clip. And so let's take a look at some of what floor, goes into this. And maybe I'm I'm remembering this incorrectly. No, there it is. Yeah. The floor. There it is. So this is one of the the. I don't know. It was frustrating for me at the time seeing Mattis spending three days on this texture that hardly anyone notices. But that's game design for you. Like you don't really know what what's gonna be important in the end. I noticed and it. I, I just I, I thought it was kind of cool. I didn't know. Took, took that long. If you zoom in, if you move closer, uh, you'll see all of these little kind of markings. Yeah. And that's what took time to kind of paint, paint all of those. You created symbols, a language. Like some, yeah, some kind of fake language symbols, I suppose. Uh, but Inspired I, I can get by very OCD like that. And, and, but, the, but the kind of... Um, uh, it's not... It's, it's what, what is it? Uh, it's not a pentagram, but there's like seven. Uh, sep septagram? <laughs> septagram might be the name, yeah. yeah. The foundational septagram, I actually, but for, because back then I was, um, I've always really loved this band Tool. Uh, yeah. And I was, I was, and there was like some kind of haphazard online community around that band and I met someone there who I started talking to and he sent me that kind of foundational shape. Oh, uh, got it. Of the septagram, I suppose. <laughs> I don't, yeah, uh, it's, it's whatever, the, the star thing, yep. Yeah, the star thing. And then, then of course, the work was to try and kind of turn that into something that could be in the game and that's where all of these little symbols came in. I actually don't remember doing that, so... Thank you for reminding me. Were, were you trying to make it say something? Like, is there supposed to be a story written here? Or is it just, nah, just I don't symbols. think so. I just tried just to symbols. Make it look cool and just ship it. Just symbols. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, 
Um, so and this. I'm pretty sure Yannick built this map. Uh, so if these... uh, can you can yeah, you no. restart it and play it normally? One one thing that I you know, I really enjoyed about Enclave was the way we used uh, physics here. This was you know one of my contributions to the game as well. I integrated a, a third party physics engine. This was before Havoc and stuff existed. Um, and yeah, you restart it, so you have you don't see the explosions, but basically everything falling apart are sort of pre-generated oh. um, physics simulations. And, and your this saying was point is probably after the explosion. Yeah. So you have to like do a clean restart if you want to see it. But, but oh, there's there will be uh, explosions as I as I come up here. Yeah. Is a trigger we, for that. We we built all this stuff for. Um, a lot of the like the siege engine ideas and stuff that we had, like the big machinery and the the toppling stuff and everything. Um, and while we had to scale down on on a lot of those ambitions, as a tool, this worked out really nicely to just dress up the level and have you know some moving stuff going on in the level, making it you know yeah. more interesting to move around in. Uh, yeah. And it turned out to be a very cheap way, like the level designers could do that all by themselves without having to involve a animator or anything like that. You're not, you're not supposed to, to do that. Guys. I'm not allowed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Yeah, there was... Uh, th this whole uh, simulation thing was very cool. And and it was different every time you ran it. So you would run it... Hepti and it oh, heptagram. Would... Strix, Strix right? in, in chat was saying a heptagram is seven. Ah, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, right. sorry. Nice, nice. Okay. Have to uh, keep so being anyway, us you, you're kind of simulating these things, uh, and every once in a while, it'll, the pieces will fall the perfect way, and that—that's the one you save and put in the game. And there's like, oh, the got it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that's really at least how I remember it. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Yeah. And that was a really good thing because that meant we could do very complex things and still have rely on them showing up in the right, so you, they wouldn't block off the player. Uh, from yeah, they wouldn't do anything crazy. Way. Yeah, they would they would fall the same way every time, and we knew it looked good because we had tried yeah. and moved all the input parameters and, and that kind of stuff. So, the gold pots you got up there, did you need to ride the thing up to get those? Or can you get up there otherwise? Yeah, okay. It's gone into they focus mode. <laughs> focus mode. <laughs> Yeah, so, so I like, guess I'm you need not to write. taking that verbal pretty, input. That was pr probably a pretty harsh design there. Like you get one chance when the the gate is opened and then lose, you lose. I wouldn't uh, do that nowadays. Is there some way to look at those walls without the torch or do you need it? Oh. Uh, to see? Uh, I mean those walls here in the tunnel. Uh, so we can't hear you, Landon. You, Oh, and sorry, sorry. I, I just realized I was muted. But um, oh, the the uh, yeah, I, I've trapped myself in right now. But you can close the gate again, and um, there's not really a way to see these sewer walls without the light. Uh, it's just kind of a it's like a shader problem that was uh, inherited in the re-release, and you have to do some modding to get it to to look uh, the original way. Um, right. But. Uh, you guys want to see a trick? Yeah, here, let me show you a programming trick. There was some bump trick. mapping here, wasn't there? Oh, a what? Must be. Must be some bump mapping here. Yeah, no, I seem to remember this is like the one place in the game where we actually felt in some of the new tech that basically made it into Riddick in the end. Oh, uh -huh. you guys want to see a? But, but it's not normal map for sure. It's definitely bump map. In Zonderson, okay. you might you might uh, appreciate this. See, this is the part where you're supposed to crouch in the map like that. Here's mm -hmm. here's a bug that we found. You ho you swing your sword like that, and right when I was doing that, now I'm holding C. So the game okay. thinks I'm crouched. Here we go. Wow. <laughs> you can go through without having to crouch, and so that's it. The game is storing your variable as crouching and your your height in the game is lower but you're running normally now this might be a good time to talk about the qa for this game oh yeah uh, 
So that was funny. We had one guy on the team doing the QA. He was a very nice guy and he was very good at playing the game. Uh, so we would ask him like, how's the difficulty? And he would say, ah, I think it could be a little bit more challenging. It was, uh, when when the game got released, one of the things that people said is how difficult it was. Yep. Yeah, because we we just constantly turned it up based on <laughs> this one guy's feedback because he was an expert in the game. And that's not his fault, that's totally our fault because we're, we were so inexperienced and useless. Uh, well, okay. And, and we did, and we then, honestly, we, yeah. did, we didn't really have time to sanity check, so we had to rely on like, okay, at least someone is making an, an educated call here. Okay, let's let's turn it up a little bit more. We can we go there, we watch him play, and say, yeah, he seems to manage it. We don't really have time to fight ourselves. Let's let's keep fixing bugs. <laughs> Amazing. It was so insane, like, I know uh, when there was three weeks before ship, and, and this was also in the day where you couldn't really uh, kind of update the game after it was, was released. I guess you could technically, but, but nobody too really common. did that. Yeah, yeah, it was uncommon. So, But there was three weeks before we had to submit the Gold Master, and, and we had two levels with no gameplay on it at all. Or three levels, maybe it was. I don't know. It was two or three. Um, so that was, um, yeah. It was hard to, <laughs> hard to make. Hard to focus on the right things. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and and the game is way, way too big than we intended it to be. Like, just the idea of having two separate campaigns. I didn't. I don't think we realized what we were aiming for there. Yeah, oh, and, and, wow. and we're also so incredibly pig-headed that we stick to it, even though it's ridiculous and stupid. Uh... Hey, can we talk about some of the uh, art on the walls here? <laughs> For sure. I recognize this. Is this from, is this from Sorcery? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are and, all shots yeah, from... See. Oh, that's, uh, that's the outpost. And yeah. that would be from Sorcery. I think that that was in the tech uh, demo. I, yeah, that looks like something I built. I did. I I never saw this. That looks what cool. I'd like for that to be a level. And uh, that's probably Shai Dahim that I was working on for sorcery. I'm not really? a hundred percent. I've seen this one in uh, concepts, yeah. arts. Yeah, yeah. There's but, uh, the one with the the woman there earlier. Uh, I believe uh, Kingstrom built that model. And that was a character from Sorcery, and we had this tech demo where we were kind of showing uh, a person moving around because, as you remember, everyone was T-posing, but somehow some, we were able to, like, play pre-canned animations on people. Mm. Yeah, we recorded so, that. It was, like, one of the first things we actually managed to record, motion capture with our, Sorcery. Yeah, with our magnetic mocap system. Yeah. Uh, so this... I don't know if this predated the optical systems, but it, at that at that point in time, 20 years ago, it wasn't a sure thing which one was going to win out if it was the magnetic or optical motion capture systems. And we got this optical or magnetic one, and it was the weirdest thing you can ever imagine. Like you're wearing this batteries and electric like cables and shit all over your body, and the capture volume is like. I guess two cubic meter, but the footprint is like one square meter, and then it's um, two meters tall, kind of. Mm. Uh, I don't know what that is in metric, but it's small. <laughs> um, uh, so we couldn't do any running animations or anything uh, unless we had a treadmill. So we had to get a treadmill, and people had, or our guy, our animator Miko. guy, Miko, uh, who did like all of the movements for all of the characters basically uh, he had to run on this treadmill at very high speeds in order to capture these running animations uh, that was scary <laughs> oh my god but, uh, <laughs> and then was, somebody uh, turned the, the microwave on and totally killed it all yeah, yeah exactly. because we had uh, we had the it generated the... like this magnetic field like uh, Mathis was talking about and, and the things you had on here was sort of detectors where in the magnetic field you were. So he was 
kind of like a stuntman and an animator in one, uh, running on this treadmill and then pausing, pressing stop on the computer, checking the animation. Did it turn out all right? No, I need to do, go one once more, turning it on, running again. Yeah, and, and once we moved to, to Uppsala, uh, we put that system into the kitchen of the office because that was the only space that could accommodate the treadmill or whatever. Uh, and when people went in to microwave their pe microwave pizzas, uh, the microwave would kind of totally scramble the magnetic field, so that would ruin the, the recordings. Wow, <laughs> that's oh man, that's that's so harsh. Um, uh, do you guys want me to show you how we speed run through this first level? I've got a little timer in the bottom uh, right. Would love to. go for it. Okay. So, in this level, so the way you start, uh, and the way we do the speedruns is you, you start the timer when you start moving. So I'm gonna go right now, strafe into that position, and over here, first thing you have to do is hit the uh, lever. Just do a smooth turn over there, try not to get your foot caught in too many areas, because that'll cost you about 0.2 seconds. Do a little short burst turning over here, because if you do a smooth turn, it actually slows your character down. Quick turn around after you get the torch, um, and then just keep running through. You can't be turning your mouse when you're jumping, otherwise that'll produce a short hop. Get the sword, uh, enter into the false crouch mode, which is holding the C after you do the swing. And now we and hit down here. the trick here. you talked about? Yep, that's the trick. Yeah, we call it false crouch. Jump up here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like that. That was pretty good. And open up here. And jumping while again. you're climbing ladders. Yeah. Apparently. Exactly. Yep. Come over here. There's a trigger area right. Boom. Right there. And now the yeah. wall is going to fall. Head on through. And we'll be able yeah, that to. That was such a weird design. <laughs> you have to backtrack. Oh. <laughs> oh. There are a lot of weird designs, and I can promise you that the most evil ones are my fault. I know okay. which one that is. Oh, there's several. Boom. Nice. The well one, done. 121.91. Uh, and the, the record for this level is 119 on a PC and 117 on the Nintendo Wii. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah, that's great work. So, um, you, can, you, can you tell me about the bird? Like we see yeah, this, so... we see this bird motif throughout the entire game, and what what is is like the, yeah. does the bird have a name? <laughs> no, I don't think so. But I just uh, I don't know. I was just kind of we needed a user interface or graphical user interface or a GUI as it was called back then. Um, so uh, and we had to figure something out, and uh, Lars was uh, willing to kind of do the animations and the renders and build the models in 3D and all of that. Um, but there wasn't uh, a design for what it was going to look like. So I, I basically spent a weekend or whatever kind of drawing these out, uh, designing all of the birds and ideas for how they would move and stuff um, on just just drawing it on paper, basically, and uh -huh. I handed that over to him, and he would uh, turn out this great work. I have to say, it's really impressive, and and he hasn't since then. And then he started doing kind of production. He, he became a producer, basically, after that. So maybe it was so <laughs> the last thing he ever did. <laughs> the last thing he ever did in, in a creative in the creative sphere. <laughs> maybe that just killed him. <laughs> <laughs> It would yeah, some... it wasn't like, uh, and rendering, like doing these renders at the time yeah. was so slow and it was churning it's those out like by the end as well, like deadlines were imminent and yeah, it was hard on him. On him. Yeah, and I, I, don't, I don't think there was such a thing as after effect, effects back then, but even if there was, we certainly didn't have it. So uh, whenever there's like a video, uh, like the birds moving or whatever, any kind of post-production that's done on that, uh, I did with batch processing in Photoshop. Oh, really? So take... <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it would churn through each frame. I would create a batch for it, and you would get all these 
PGA frames or whatever. Oh, uh, wow. And, and you know, I don't know what computers we had back then, but they weren't very fast. Was it, was this like Pentium 90 days or, or are we beyond that now? I think we were beyond that. Let me I see. Pentium 120. Well, <laughs> let's see. The minimum requirements, uh, let's see, is a Pentium 3 is the minimum requirement. 128 okay. megs of RAM, a 3D accelerator card, TNT2 or equal. Ooh, TNT2. Nice. I remember that card. <laughs> Yeah. So this is uh protect the outpost, and this is uh I, I was I was zooming in on this. I wasn't sure if you knew whose signature this was. In, uh, in the like, right here. Is Tom? Uh, I don't know. That looks like I actually think... similar. I so this building was in that uh, the tech again. demo for sorcery. I I that looks like Yark's style. So I think Yark built that building. Uh, so, but I don't think that's his signature. Got it. But I know I made these because I made all of the textures. So I know I made these uh, paintings um, from obviously screenshots of various people's work. Right. Uh, but I don't know if I just made up a signature or if it's actually someone's real signature. Got it. Um. Okay, uh, you want me to run through this level? <laughs> See what goes Go for into it. it. Yes. But, okay. but yes. Yeah, so who do you think made that character model? Is that Tom's? Uh, so, Tom so the Fitzel? the fighter is Tom. I think. Yeah, this is also the, Tom. I'm pretty sure. Everything has spikes. <laughs> Every, yeah. Everything because, is. Because. Yeah. Uh, you, back then, or like the artist that people like me and Pat and Tom. The art team, I suppose, was people that we loved was like Frank Frazetta, Simon Bisley, these kinds of painters. So all of the artwork is very inspired by by those guys. Got it. And um... and I don't know if your generation even knows who they are. But... No, I, I, just, I was just going <laughs> to make a comment that back then. Uh, yeah, I, I was just going to make a comment that this was around the time when like movies like uh the matrix were coming out lord of the rings mm -hmm. was coming out and uh so there's this whole like gritty texture um was very commonplace back then um for a lot of games and it's it's one of the styles that uh, a lot of us really like and, and hold on to so um yeah that, that was uh that was one thing let me restart the level though so this Did was uh see the I think we saw the Matrix the first time we went to E3. Is that correct, Yasser? That is correct. We were blown away. Yeah, that, and it was a, such an awesome. It was like a man's Chinese theater or something. It was a huge theater. Uh, yeah, it was the like what everyone was talking about at E3 that year. It's like, have you seen the Matrix yet? Yeah. Yeah. And then we went... I think two years later, uh, the sequel was also released at E3, and we got a preview. I haven't got and to then, see the sequel, <laughs> and, then, the, and no one really wanted to talk began. about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. It's... Yeah, but The Matrix is still such a phenomenon. Yeah. And I got the new one out now. I yeah, haven't, I haven't seen it yet. I will either. see it once I get out of COVID quarantine. Yeah. Okay, let me give this level a run through. This is a, an interactive level because you get to use cannons and stuff. You pick up the crossbow. I missed that guy, so I would have already restarted this level, but that was actually a pretty good kill right there. Um, the cannon. One of the few remaining siege weapons in the game. Yeah. So, oh, actually, let me just go get this uh, potion right here. Usually I would wedge myself up against the door right there, and uh, then huh. I would not get hurt by the explosion. You'd just be able to just keep walking forward, and you wouldn't get hurt by the explosion. Um... But I opted to get a uh, potion to stay safe. So you just kind of... This is very uh, streamlined at this point. This room right here is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, like the the wall textures and, and the, all the, the flowers and all that. It's 
Yeah, that, that was very well put together. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Yank built the level. Would you agree with that, Tessa? I don't remember, but it sounds I likely. It looks like his style, so that's what I think. Okay, so you're originally supposed to go back down all the way, but we opt instead to just drop down here and hope not to die. And so now Dude. we... There's some geometry on the wall or something that you can sort of. Oh yeah. Hit. Oh yeah. There's get... geometry on every wall. You can you can wall hug in a lot of different ways. You just gotta find the right walls to work with. Go into first person you mode. Squeeze through the door there. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if I can get. This guy has such a tiny head. Did... Oh, that's pretty good. Did we have a collision layer when we did on play? Yes. Uh, for the characters. Yeah, you yeah, got well. I, you guys definitely them, did, because okay, it's good. so hard to get through. Um, yeah, you see, the level's already over. I killed the the main guys Yay. I needed to. Good job. <laughs> no, I remember. I remember for the characters. I remember being proud of that piece of tech. We had basically uh, the orbital shapes uh, that we animated along with the body, so you could actually hit a, an arrow in the arm and it would stick. That was pretty cool you at the time. Um, Sorry, I, 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 I just have to interrupt you. Uh, or, no, continue. I'll, I'll tell you later. But these, uh, yeah. I'm done. Go ahead. Okay. These cinematics. Oh my fucking god! This was this was my this was when I was like uh, legit going insane because in the very deepest of crunch, when no, you know, we were just crunching like crazy towards the end of this game. We realized we had no camera work for any of the cutscenes. And the only way to make camera work was basically to place this spline shape. The engine path. Engine path, that was what it was called, inside of Ogier, the, the level designer. Uh, now, the problem was that at this point, Ogier was incredibly buggy, and yes, I couldn't fix it because he was working on uh, fixing the bugs for the game, so the game was playable. Uh, so what would happen was, I would place this uh, engine path, I would check it, uh, does that movement look okay? Uh, of course, I didn't know what I was doing, so it's ho horrible camera work. Uh, never mind that, but uh, at least it was something. The problem was that it would very frequently crash when I was saving, and if it crashed while saving, it corrupted the the save file. I'm, I'm uh, so, so sorry. I... <laughs> oh, no, it's not your fault. Oh, it no, is it your is fault. My fault. There was nothing you could do because you had the right priorities. Oh, no. But basically, I had to maintain like ten generations of the file. Uh, so every time I saved, I saved it into a new file. So if I crashed during save, I could revert to the one before, uh, but that was harrowing. That, that was really uh, high, high <laughs> frustration. Got it. Uh, hey, you know, something that we haven't done yet, people have been here for a bit. How about we do one of those giveaways? You guys want to do a giveaway hey. really quick? Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, so let me see. To talk about what the giveaway is. So Ziggurat Interactive is, is sponsoring this stream and they are wanting to provide a, a few giveaways. So the upcoming version of the game developed by Ziggurat Interactive is being produced under license of Topware Interactive and will arrive on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Nintendo Switch with upgraded visuals and sound effects, an enhanced soundtrack with over 20 new tracks, remastered music from the original game soundtrack, and more. Um, so the game is is not out yet, so this raffle would be to basically uh, receive a copy when it, uh, when it comes out for, I'm, I'm sure, the, uh, the, the console of, the, of your choice. You would receive a key when the game comes out, and so I would, uh, I would hand your, your name over to um to to ziggurat and that's that's the way that it works so uh let's get this giveaway started we'll have a i'm gonna have to move this a little like this this is going to be i mean i'm gonna make sure mods can get it too we'll do that okay so the key word is exclamation point enclave just like i put into chat 
exclamation point enclave. And uh, so just give that a give that a type, and uh, we'll wait a, a couple of minutes, and uh, then I'll click on the the roll button, and you guys will will get one uh, picked out for you. Um, okay, so sorry to interrupt. Um, anything more you guys wanted to to go over? I think it's awesome that we'll see a re-release of this game. It's like yeah. we said, it's something we worked That's on for twenty years. The Switch. We never imagine it had to still have a life uh, <laughs> no. after Xbox. Uh, so it's it's just amazing, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, the, the the general thinking when you're making games is like, okay, this whatever I'm doing now for these three or four years, and I'm pouring my heart and soul into it. Uh, it's gonna, you know, be on the shelves for six months and then it's forgotten. So it's quite remarkable that this game somehow has a community after 20 years. And, and maybe, Landon, you can answer a question of mine. So I looked at the, the Steam graphs of Enclave and to my surprise, there's tons of people playing it. And there was like a peak a couple of years ago of like 10,000 concurrent players or something like that. Ah. Uh. And I don't know what that is. Like, why are people suddenly playing this game? It costs five dollars regularly, and on sale it costs about uh, one to two dollars. And uh, so it may have been during a sales period, um, but yeah. it's it's a it's this game is all nostalgia. It's it's uh, so, everybody so starting it and like, oh fuck, this is too hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the the main problem there are, there are a lot of. Uh, contemporary problems that we try and troubleshoot in the uh, the community one of them is that the game crashes so much there's uh there's a lot of uh i think something like a memory leak and you're having to uh change your your cores uh affinities on, on your cpu because you have too many cores this running guy's so, so. Fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, i take no responsibility for that um there's that, and then also the mouse problem I showed you with the polling rate, and I sure. actually have a video out there showing how to lower your polling rate or just buy a cheap mouse, and then it would work. Um, but it's it's mainly that. Um, but uh, yeah, and then then the difficulty. I mean, you look at some of the reviews, and the people are just you just want you just think you know what you guys might just be bad at video games. They'd be like, there's no checkpoints, and yes, there are checkpoints, and so it's. I was on this well, level for 90 minutes. No, you weren't. I think those comments are very fair because there are some incredibly harsh places in this game where uh, the player is truly punished. <laughs> very yeah, it's ridiculous. My my favorite of that one is, is the hidden lever. Uh, I don't <laughs> yeah, remember the, the level about the water uh, thing. Uh, and... Yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't know if you... Are you able to call up uh, levels, Landon? Do... Do what? Sorry. Like, do you have to play them in order, or can you call up any level that you want? After you beat them, yes, you can. You can call them up. And I, I've got. I mean, if you wanted me to pull up a level, like I've got saves created. Yeah. So, so there's one like underwater level. The sanctuary. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> this is also okay. So to set the scene, this is towards the end crunch, and it's like the middle of the night, and I'm sitting across from. Uh, Johan Andersson, Janne, uh -huh. uh, and he is scripting the gameplay on the level, and he he's you know he's 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 like almost mentally dead at this point because everyone has been uh, we've been crunching for so long, uh, and so he asks me, do you have any ideas for gameplay here? Uh, oh, this is such an absurd map. Yeah, so can you go down? So there are some puzzles in this level that are my creation and i must apologize to everyone who has encountered these and tried to solve them um there's puzzles in this one? Have any... here's <laughs> here's the the one of the you gotta go over here to get this gem <laughs> you gotta do that if you if you're doing a hundred percent back up yeah. and you go down here and that goes down yeah here we are. Uh, to go there's that. some some room uh, at some point here. I don't know. I think it's the last, almost at the no, end. Yeah, but level. that's the no, no. But first, there's the first evil trap that I okay. Uh, which is oh, are you talking? I know what you're talking about. You're talking about this one at the very end with Zale, right? 
Well, I'm also talking about that one, but this one, uh, yeah. it's set up basically so the player thinks they have to pull those levers yep. in a certain combination. Yeah. And it's the very end of the level, so you've been fighting hard to get here. And, and of course, if you die, you have to restart the whole fucking thing. Yeah, yeah. So you, I love that. So, and the guy is <laughs> trapped, trapped in the thing, and he says, okay, or whatever, you... you, you once you pull one of these, he goes, uh oh, that's not good. And the spike moves closer to him. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> uh huh. So at this point, what are you thinking as a player? Of course, I can see this in retrospect, but I have no idea about this now. But basically, right. uh, you realize first, you, first, the first time you try it, it's something like, okay, I have to just pull the right lever, lever and it will open, and the guy won't be impaled and die, and I have to start all over. Uh, but <laughs> but then you pull all three of them and the guy gets impaled and dies. Okay, so then you start thinking, okay, so is it a combination? Yeah. And if and <laughs> and <laughs> it turns out it's not a combination either. And so I have no idea how many hours people have wasted on that. But it's actually this secret lever. Oh, I I, I love yeah. When it's when I, uh, <laughs> I I give this game to, so to people bad. and and I and I watch them play it and I'm just. I, I always let them try and figure out this part themselves and it's just it's so it's too fun so yeah so that's yeah I appreciate that hey let's uh, roll for the giveaway right now let's click on the giveaway we're rolling it right now boom and the winner is Mr. Pronka oh man Mr. Pronka okay I will uh, reach out to you we're discord buddies so we will get to you buddy and uh that will be awesome okay cool good job congrats yeah, so you, Mr. Uh, yeah so that's one horrible possible puzzle that you can blame me for but there's one in the beginning of the level too where this room gets flooded oh yep and you you're supposed to turn some valves or something in the ceiling yep uh there's valves down yeah. here that you turn and you get you have to let the water fill up in order to get the diamond and then you swim down otherwise you can't yeah. get that diamond right right so that's another one of those that are incredibly brutal to the player so okay so now so this is you are credited as doing additional level design in this game and so is is this the level design that you're talking about no, that's actually... Oh, that would be fun to see. I, I built a small level as well, which is this kind of island thing. It's a tall island. I have no idea what it's called. A tall uh, island. It's, the plateau? Yeah, it's like... Maybe. Uh, it's in the water. It's either at the beginning or at the end of a, of a sequence. Um, Let's see. The plateau. Oh yeah, this, this one? one. This one I built. Yeah. You built this, this level? Is the, is... my, yeah. My so I, I can blame you then. <laughs> yes, you can blame. I can me blame for you for this sniper. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put place any snipers. I just built the the environment. Gotcha. And I didn't. I didn't do the gameplay. That looks like. Yeah, it's it's this sniper right here. They can have just like 100% accuracy. She's being very nice right now, but they can have perfect accuracy. You just turn the corner and yeah, and then they get you right in the head like that. Oh, bastards. But <laughs> what happened was when I built that level, I had it I had a completely flat top, so it looked very artificial. Um and the other we call them level designers then, but I guess environment artist would be the correct term today. Mm. Uh, they were like, we, we can't stand it. We have to soften this top. So it's, it's a, the top is a bit uh, smoother than when I built it. And um... it's still very beautiful though. I'm, I'm still taking aback a, a little bit with all the beautiful environments in this game. It's There are some it's, cool ones. It's, it's, yeah. it's very nice to see. Um, it's... I can sort of seal like you forget so much about the games you work on uh so it's and it's so hard to go back and look at like 
as a developer when you go back and look at an old game especially me being sort of a, a technical focus uh all you see are the bugs that you never fixed so it's painful it's actually painful to look at old games uh, see someone play and you see all the things that you never had time to fix um but for enclave it's gone so long so i've forgotten about all the bugs that i <laughs> that we didn't fix so now i only see like the the end result and and it's, well, it's actually very nice but it's also interesting because uh it's the same for art of course you see this yeah things that turned out shitty but it's really lovely to see this again i think uh, i'm pretty sure yeah built this level and i think he hid some some texts uh, up on the roofs oh yep Are you... i'll show you yep it is right here Ook. Ook. yeah and there's also a hank somewhere uh those were his friends right no uh, this <laughs> is because he was very into charles bukowski at the time oh there was the other so one. the book is for bukowski or bukowski i don't know how to say that i don't know where and, the other uh, one is i, I forgot I, I remember that there yeah, i think it was maybe it's a hank okay i don't know if it was this level or maybe it was the dark side Oh uh, yeah, it could be. Yeah, it could be, could be. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, um, Hank is like the alter ego of Charles Bukowski in, in the novels. Oh, that would make sense so then. That's why it's just Hank. Okay. He's reading Ham on Rye every day. So, this level right here, Escort oh, Marcus, oh, we get to... Oh my fucking god. His lines, his lines of dialogue are so Marcus, mind the merchant. <laughs> Why was this game never in Swedish? Why is it always in well, English? Well, the, the goblins are in Swedish. The go <laughs> Okay, confirmed. The goblins are Swedish. Confirmed. Yeah, so so how that happened was uh, the team was expanding as we were making this game. And uh, uh, we hired a guy, Erik Pettersson. I don't know where he works now. Do you know? Uh, he was at like the new Starbreeze for a long, long time. He, he might still be there. Like oh, okay. over here was Starbreeze. Anyway, one day he just disappeared into uh, Gustav Jefberg, the, the sound designer's office, and then he emerged with a big smile and he had recorded all of these lines for for the goblin. <laughs> you just went into a room and made a bunch of weird noises? Maybe. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're screaming Swedish uh, things for you, like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know some of those words. Like when they're talking about money, they say there's no money. They into pang, into pang. Yeah, I, some of that I know from my studies. Let's keep looking for the key. Yeah, so uh, at least that's how I know he did the voice, but I, uh, that's how I remember it happening. It's, it's him just uh, they're, they're doing it kind of uh, guerrilla style, and suddenly it's yeah. in the game and it stayed. Everybody yeah. thought it was very funny. I didn't put. I didn't get the timer started. I don't know. <laughs> I love this part like, here. This is the jump shot. Boom! Love that. Nice. What I wanted to. It reminds me of another funny story, though. Like with the hit damage numbers. I don't know if you remember the controversy regarding though basically i'm uh, sure i hated it and, and threw you hated it, it so much basically whenever you hit someone you see uh, how much damage you make yeah and that was never meant to be in the game uh, i put it in as a debug number yeah okay to, be able to balance balance weapons and stuff like that um and I kind of liked it, so I, I made an extra bit of effort to make them a little bit prettier, so they faded out and some stuff like that. And then I snuck it in there and turned it on by default. And and then people got used to it. So when when the art people who wanted a pure game later on said, well, it's just a debug feature, it's not meant to be there. <laughs> I had the, the team rallied around keeping it for gameplay purposes. Fucking hell. I'm sure I was very, very angry. Furious. <laughs> <laughs> Who made this puzzle? Um, 
I, it's either Janne or Fred, though. I think this is Fredrik. It would be uh, so. absolutely awful if it changed on you, but it, luckily for us speedrunners, it never changes. But, um... <laughs> nice. Yeah, we probably couldn't do randomized stuff very easily. But, um, Fredrik Jungdahl, who is, um... Game Maybe this Taylor, door has no physics. Like that, that machine games, he... It was Fredrik and Janne who basically scripted all of the gameplay and all of the levels of the whole game. So it's one of those two guys. Uh, but oh. what I wanted to ask you before, yes, uh, was did we do like collision geometry in the levels at this point in time? I'll show you. I think we did, yeah. Uh, well, here. Parsley. This right here, there is no way to get through these boxes. Right. So. Right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so it, what, because we have all of these things sticking out, like that porch or whatever, um, when originally you would get caught on all of those things if you're running around and you... So, because it would be a hard stop. So we build like a collision geometry layer of like wedges and things. So you oh. would slide over those oh, things. Oh, wow. Okay. So all of that is very labor intensive <laughs> manual work making the levels kind of I see what you okay semi wow easy to, uh, I'm sure that's the case for these vaults as, as well you Yeah no it's it's for everything now it's it's coming back to me like the floor as you see there like if we didn't do that it would be impossible to run on because you would just get stuck and it, you would you know jump up and down and stuff like that maybe you do yeah. actually <laughs> but yeah, like, you they, definitely they have, get stuck but you have to, they have to make a pass on just making th sure you can move around the level. And I think a big part of the QA was finding places where you got stuck and then they went in and placed this invisible geometry uh, to make sure it didn't happen. Um, yeah. Well, speaking of QA, so we, I, you know, I told you we had this one guy internally, but then once we got close to ship, then the publisher was going to help out. And. At this point in time, like, nobody knew what they were doing yet. Like, it, this was new to everybody. And, and uh, you know, every new game that came had an additional level of complexity. Uh, and the QA that we got from the publisher on this game was, like, like nothing you would ever believe. It, it, could, be, it could be something like... Uh, you can fall through the world. That's it. It doesn't even indicate which level they were mm. talking about. Oh. Let alone which place in the map. That's the whole comment. Is you can. It's like an Excel sheet with comments. You can fall through the world. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, that, it, it was that. That uh, was kind of the, <laughs> the situation. That would not pass that... muster. No, it's not good. <laughs> no, we are in a different. So I made, um, I helped out a little bit uh, on this uh, FMV stuff with um, with the pages. Yeah. So I didn't paint. I, I I think I painted a lot of the text. I'm not sure. I'm not. A, or maybe that was someone else. I definitely didn't paint the the pictures, but I assembled these pages from various materials and and added my own stuff and. Okay. So it got. Uh, because it, yeah, go ahead. So you were saying that they all all of the frames were batch processed in Photoshop, and then they got turned into a Bink video somehow. Yeah, yeah. Got it. You just uh, yeah, you, you can just treat them as all of the frames as individual pictures. Got it. Yeah. So Ladon, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, so I think the original release of Enclave didn't have checkpoints at all, and then they were added on the PC version. Is that correct? There is one checkpoint in the entirety of the Xbox release, which is on the final <laughs> Jacindra level. And um, otherwise, there are no checkpoints on the Xbox version that is locked into the hard difficulty. Then the PC version was released that introduced the medium and the easy difficulty. And all that this does is that it increases your health, the the amount of health that your character has. And um, 
then also it uh, redu it uh, increases your, your damage that you deal. So more health and more damage. Otherwise, the enemies are hitting you for the exact same. The, the level is just the exact same. And there's also checkpoints. So... Yeah, that's that's what went what went into it. But but we actually had one checkpoint, so we had the system. <laughs> we kind of knew that we needed a system and implemented that, but we never had time, I guess, to implement checkpoints. I guess we we honestly didn't know how hard the game was when we released it. We we didn't really know, but once we released the PC version, we had a little bit more time to to fix that, I guess. Yeah. Such a weird situation. There is, I was reminded now seeing you playing, that there is a super secret easter egg that one guy did. In Divided City? I don't, I don't remember the level, but uh, he did it so he was, so he could propose to his girlfriend. Really? There's a, uh, will you marry me? Yeah, in there? if you do the the right sequence of events, but it's so incredibly impossible to figure that out. So only whoa, you... <laughs> there is a hidden this... "Will you marry me?" In the... oh my gosh, is this but, in the final game? You mean? I don't know. I, like I don't know how to trigger it, but you have to do a very specific type of thing. But uh, the, the 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 most fun part of the story is that. Uh, they broke up, so it never got used. <laughs> oh, this, this... But the person who did that was not uh, Janne or Fredrik, so that means we had to have more people scripting gameplays on, on these levels. Mm. No, I the... think we had a bunch of, of people, like uh, people doing AI scripting and some stuff like that as well. Like. I remember oh, okay. a lot of people just moving back and forth a little bit. Oh, okay. Helping out. Yeah, that makes sense. Hey, you guys know how there's uh, this area here you're supposed to go into to save the the gnome from... Oh, they're not... They haven't spawned yet. But I don't remember any of this. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, there's I a big area you're supposed first. to go in. Save a gnome. He comes over here. He hits a switch, and then that raises a platform here. Well, if you're playing as the okay. halfling, you just jump across it and oh, nice. say whatever. And you can actually oh, do that with man. every character. It's uh, just easiest with the halfling because she runs at about uh, 1.35 times the uh, regular speed. Seems so, like a halfling should run slower, but what do I know? Yeah, well, I think she was supposed to be on the boar, and that was supposed to make her fast. And then yeah. maybe it was the I'm, speed that translated I'm sure over. That was it. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's. I, we could point out some inconsistencies, like, hey, why is the divided <laughs> city still, you know, okay if it was divided 500 years ago? <laughs> so. Yeah. That's you also. See with the rift, don't you? Yeah. Is there a big uh, face here somewhere, that stone face that you enter? Uh, no, not yet. that's in uh, Underworld. That's at the very end okay. of the Underworld level. Okay, so oh, Durzu. We all hate Durzu. Yeah, I remember this guy. Because of how yeah. much Boss. RNG One there is. One of the few bosses we had, yeah. So speedrunners don't like RNG, huh? No. <laughs> what, what is RNG? All right, Randomness. uh... It's it's a, it's the term that uh, got popularized. Uh, random number generator. It's, it just means random events. So uh, his behavior, it's it can uh, it can vary. He can decide to just stand still and do nothing. But we want him to be flinging those little guys at us so we can kill him sooner. But if he just decides to stand still, then whatever. Also, a little trick right there. If you kill yourself, it ends the level sooner. Using a uh, the revival nice. exploit. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, yeah, that's that's one of the things one of the reasons we play on easy is that when you die and you respawn at a checkpoint, only in easy and normal, um, it advan and you spam enter really quick, it skips past the cutscene of you reviving and you gain like two seconds in the in the game. Like the game passes two seconds after you skip that cutscene. So you'll see when we do this the Yasindra level, it's it's a uh, pretty fun. Oh, you're gonna love the Vitar fight, by the way. Do you guys know the the uh, 
The trick behind Vitar. I saw your I video, Landon. I know the trick. <laughs> okay. I don't even know what Vatar looks like anymore. He's got three mouths. It's, it's not, you did the it's, voice it's for him. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did the it's voice for him. He's got he's got three I, mouths, one on his shoulder. He doesn't have a jaw. He actually has oh, a mouth yeah. on his crotch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that must be a bad thing from creation. Uh, so, oh, let me tell you about this level. This is interesting. Stop here for a second. I'm sorry. I'm going to mess up your speed run. But... So you see this boat here? Yep. Uh, in right. Sweden, in Sweden, we have uh, this uh, famous ship that sank many hundreds of years ago. I'm not going to put a date on it, but it's called Regalskeppet Vasa. Uh, so it sank in Stockholm ha Harbor because the engineering was horrible <laughs> and it was super expensive and they had been working on it for, uh, you know, decades or something. And on its maiden voyage, it immediately flipped over. Coupled over, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was a major trauma for the nation and then in the 70s or something they they pulled it up uh, and they put it in a museum uh, and you can go to this museum Vasa Museet uh, and look at it uh, so I went there with a camera and I took pictures from every side of the ship uh, and uh, recreated it in the game so, awesome uh, yeah, and it's cool because we have these splines, these curved surfaces. Uh, if you back up a little bit, um, you can see how it's curving out there on the hull. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you could more or less trace the shape of the ship because of uh, how the engine was uh, working. This is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, don't thank me. Or I, no, thank, I this, my, thank the shipbuilder. Thank the yes. Swedish the, the shipbuilder builders. who got executed for their incompetence. <laughs> they got yeah. executed? No, no, I don't think so. But, oh, man. But I, I'm I, sure I think they did. they changed hands, Phew. too. The, the king was constantly asking for more cannons and higher. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> here's the thing. This ship consists of, the exterior of the ship consists of a, tr a large amount of very big textures because uh, they're all kind of unique and they cover the whole ship. And that means that we wasted something like 94% of the texture bu budget for the entire level on the exterior of this ship. Oh my god. <laughs> so the rest of the level is like hyper optimized. Uh, including the interior and everything. Is that why there's to... a fog? Uh, I don't think so. The f well, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably what it is. No, that doesn't seem like a texture <laughs> thing. That seems like a geometry thing. It's probably heavy in geometry. But... Um, Here it is without uh, the fog. Oh, nice. But it's very clever reuse of a very small amount of textures for the entire rest of the level just because everything is spent on this boat on the exterior the of the boat. <laughs> yeah the you interior don't see half of it. it's like two textures <laughs> got it that's re really interesting wow and this this is the level where we have the shark right this is yes it it's one of my favorite it's also one of these kind of technical like how the heck do we do this i think you want, want to see a neat trick swimming. that we do? Here. Yeah, do it. Okay, so there is a line uh, right here that if you cross it, then it spawns all the guys up here and up here. Um, and then there's another line that spawns further guys up here and the sniper there and an orc right there. And uh, you can just jump past that and have no guys in your way. <laughs> nice. So this is do you a, have a way to visualize the triggers? Like, uh, I be some debug commands for that. Uh, no, no. I was I was right. trying to look for something like that, but yeah, you see, we don't have any goblins yeah. down here. Then I jump on these boxes a certain way, and now no goblin jumps up there, and uh, we only have this one uh, assassin right here, and that's our only obstacle. Um, but the rest of the way is nice. entirely clear. Nobody else in our way. So, oh, I got an arrow in my butt. <laughs> yep. 
There's a sn yeah, so this level is uh, riddled with snipers that make uh, make life scary because they could just headshot you out of nowhere. And we have to jump up these boxes a certain way. Boom, just like that. Oh boy, I'm gonna it get hit. Looks so easy when you do it. I have a lot of hours in this game. Oh, okay, now we do a false crouch right here to go under there, jumping up here, open the door, grab the log, and book it out of there. And now we get into the scene where they start shooting cannons at you, and I, I don't know if you guys... It's would a trap! Do. I think this, this is, might be my fault as well, the cannonballs. That I is feel the, like it's you something have to. I pushed on the arm there. As the halfling, though, you don't like have to this. worry about any of it. I like that we could use the physical system to blow stuff up. Yeah, but it's so unpredictable. Like, you have no idea where it's going to hit strike. There's no warning. You can't avoid it. Right. Like, it's, it's pure luck if you're, if you're in, oh, it, in No, it's not luck. It's trial and error. It Multiple is. Times okay. On the it's, same level. Yeah, it's yeah, always the same spot. Sometimes it's happening behind you as well, so you can't right. really see what's going on. Yeah, if... Uh, actually, okay, let me... Let me finish the level, and then I'll show you what I discovered about the areas. Is It's just uh, the holes are part of the world, um, and then the parts that get blown away are objects on top. So if we go back into Arkhamar... Right. Yeah, that was a te technical thing. That It has to do with the way we do lighting in this game. Yeah, so I'm going to do XR world only one and so that's showing just everything in the world it has no objects and this is the way let me see if i oh dear yeah you see i can run right over it and so there's just a yep. uh, collision layer uh on top of it that is preventing me from yeah everything but this is showing all the little bits that would uh fall off and all that so and a lot of time trying to mask like the when we render out lighting like the light maps on top of this uh we spent a lot of time trying to make sure that there were no uh, edges or stuff like that uh so when we trigger the animation it actually pops into a dynamic lighting thing um from this pre-rendered thing uh, at the last possible moment to to hide that scene got it and uh, now we see in this level, we get to, to see the boat again in a, a little bit of a different form. All right. Briefly. Let's take and a look at uh, we have to save the what this memory. boat is. Get it out of uh -huh. Oh, yeah. So it's just, uh... <laughs> That's a smarter, <laughs> more cheap way to render it. Very nice. <laughs> yep. So... Usually people don't swim out that far. I think it exits you from the level if you you go out too far. It's, don't we have the shark here as well? No, no sharks. No sharks. It just exits you from the level. It says you are now exit. You're leaving the mission, and that's it. All right. I, I, I feel like we built up this shark a lot, and then we didn't show it. Oh, you want me to get eaten by sharks? You have to. <laughs> For the audience. For the okay. Audience. Da -dun. Da -dun. <laughs> I think everyone, everyone who's played the game have seen the sharks enough. <laughs> you think so? If they made it this well, far. Well, if you play I mean... this, if they've made it this far and play this level, they've suddenly have been eaten by sharks more than once. Here we go. Oh, oh it's so nice. He just nuzzles up against you <laughs> and. <laughs> <laughs> That's quality animation right there. <laughs> that is a shark. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure this is the solution because we didn't, it didn't work to build fists around so you could swim, which would have been okay on the level and everything. It's still like, how do you, how do you stop the player from swimming away or stuff like that? It, it so, could yeah. also be that we didn't have texture memory to build the sea floor. <laughs> it could be that things could like that. could also be true. Um, it is a weird one. I'm actually gonna... Well, it's interesting, all of the uh, 
uh, what we were talking about before about these numbers, yes, uh, and yeah. and these these incredible conflicts that we've had over the years, but especially in the early days, because we didn't yeah, really get along very well. Stranger. We had very different nope. views of uh, of uh, what a game should look like, but I think that changed. Right. Okay. When did that change? Maybe to the game, the... maybe. <laughs> <laughs> when we shipped on <laughs> when we really realized that you actually have to finish this thing too yeah. maybe these yeah. these things we were so angry about weren't that important <laughs> yeah exactly but Damn. i'm really uh, happy, like that's one of those cases where i where uh, started out not getting along and then after enough time really getting along well once you get to yeah. understand each other better um, yeah, very happy about that. Also, I was a total idiot back then, so I'm glad Who I, wasn't? <laughs> I've mellowed out a bit. Yeah, but it's just incredible the insane fights uh, that you or that I've gotten myself into trying to pr protect some kind of artistic goal that is ultimately totally meaningless. Oh, what's going on here now? Well, is this an <laughs> Easter egg? Yeah, the goblin got pulled I... away by the shark. I'm not sure <laughs> on that one. <laughs> yeah. How did you trigger that one? It's it's weird. You have to okay. find a super secret area. There's also an Easter egg where, like, uh, on the plateau, the one that uh, Inz Mate's uh, worked on, um, it launches a rocket ship. It's kind of neat. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like the house turns into a rock. There's a house in the oh, water. Yeah. It turns into the rock and it shoots it up. <laughs> okay. Okay, whatever on the time. I don't know. It's kind of whatever on the time. I'm doing this quickish. <laughs> um, but I, I like this level uh, too. Towards the end of the campaign, right? Or? No, no, no. Uh, we no. are. We're a little over halfway. We're level 9 oh, wow. of 14. There's so much content in this game, it's insane for the, yeah. the size of the team. And and then doing it again, backwards. And I still find it so cool as well that we reused the geometry, but we built all the script and state levels backwards, like the reversal of the Merchant Marcus mission. That in the first time you encounter it, you, you escort him through this annoying assassin stuff. And then in the dark campaign, you get to play the assassins and, and try to assassinate him. Yeah, oh, yeah. you've got you got it's a lot of weird. people saying which campaign is canon, <laughs> which which one's the real campaign. And um, Mister <laughs> Pronka and I uh, consider that. You know, one one of the guys who's in uh, chat, uh, Mister Pronka, who he won the giveaway. Um, him and I really like the dark campaign because it feels like there's more emphasis on actually playing the assassin and there's more of a story behind playing that character while on the light campaign uh you can pick any character in this band of uh adventurers and and it would still work out all right um but yeah we we like to think that there's a just a little bit more um canon on playing the assassin um in the dark campaign did i do so anything? i actually don't i don't know but like there was a sequel in the making as as i'm sure you know yep uh so neither of me or matis worked on that one right matis you didn't work on no. the encounter uh, too no we were busy with working on chronicles of riddick uh but i guess they must have picked one because that story took place after the the first one I'm yeah. sure there's an answer for you, but there's, not from us. Yeah, there's I'm a... I'm sure there is not an answer. I don't even okay. think we thought along those lines when we were making it. There, Yeah, you were supposed to okay. play as a, a certain character. It was, it was like a race. It's just some kind of a, like, get here before the evil sorceress or something. And you play as a one character the entire time, and it's more puzzle-based. That's what we, was on the, the, wiki, the wiki article. Right. Yeah, Mr. Pronk is saying Assassin's Story is more grounded, logical, and believable. So, who made that book rendering, Yasa? Do you remember? No, there was some some contractors. I think a Russian guy that someone knew, and and we we just needed something, and he was good. And it turned out yeah, really it well. Yeah, it looks I think. nice. Yeah, 
I'm very surprised at the quality there. So, playing through ah, this level, you never want to have a shield on this level. Um, Why is that? I will show you. Um, I have no armor and no shield, and honestly, I can go through the entire game without armor and shield. And let me get to a point, I'll show you. You have to false crouch under that, get here to spawn the lich, and uh, then you have to do a neutral combo to dispose of these skeletons quickly. And then you can get through there. <laughs> and just jump across. And it's, it's all such about... a weird level. Yeah, it it, it really it's makes so me think of Bioshock. Have underwater fantasy. Yeah, it's it's Bioshock, place. you know. It's Bioshock. <laughs> Bioshock came out after this game. Yes. Yeah. Surely so. inspired by Enclave. Yep, that was it. They're like, hey guys, I check would... out this check out this game by Starbreeze. I would say that Bioshock came out in two thousand and seven maybe. So maybe. Yeah, here's Bioshock why Bioshock. here's why I don't have the shield and the armor, is because I hit a checkpoint and I need to get up there quickly, so I let them kill me. Oh uh, clever. And it already starts the sequence with the Oh, come on, with the uh, Lich already, because as I mentioned, it advances time, and so we're already in the trigger area for her. And, right. Um, That's quite a huge act, axe for that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was a nice Lich kill. <laughs> that wasn't too bad. Nice. Uh, usually she's a lot more painful. She likes to use her... Uh, shield and that uh that's that's like one of the more overpowered things about the lich and the druid is that their shields are just they negate all damage let's see if i can pull off this uh this bug here jump up on here jump over there and then boom then we keep going and then we'll be able to keep swimming through this area see? no way i yep. i remember <laughs> Sitting with Jan trying to plug that hole before the player could get there. Ah! Well, we got it. Was, it. Again, it's this false geometry or invisible geometry that goes there in order to. Wow, that was a fast playthrough. Uh, he has to basically spawn this false geometry and he's animating it too, I think. I think it moves. I don't remember. But he has to put it there so there's no possibility of the player getting out before they turn the valves. Got it. Um, and uh, he did it like four times and I was testing it to see if I could get out and I could always get out. And then he did like a super fix, so it was totally impossible. But clearly you have outwitted. <laughs> you just got to do it really quick. <laughs> yeah. So in this level, I'm using the, uh, the mace because um, it works really well against uh, skeletons. And um, that's the only thing that you have to kill in this level is a skeleton. And so even though characters have their favored weapons and they do more damage with a favored weapon, um, it's still just better to use a mace for the halfling. Yeah, you just, Does the game tell you that, what, what the favorite weapon is for each character? Uh, you figure it out and also... Yeah, you just you, you, you can out. figure it out basically. Of course, the game doesn't. Tell it's it's you inferred that. from the from the game because. Um, it's inferred. Of well, be, from the UI, from the UI. Here's the the mouth. Oh, here's the face. Here's the face. Yeah, I remember doing some custom textures for that, and yeah. it was hell to get that opening to work. Oh really? Right. Yeah, it was constantly like too small for or something. It was weird. Got it. Yeah, so I'll, I'll show you what I mean by you can infer it from the UI before you actually discover it. It's got a little axe icon for the halfling. Right. Um, if we switch to the engineer, it would have a little hammer icon. Um, and then the first ones at the top of his list are all the hammers, and then it goes into the axes and then into the swords. Oh, I see. Yeah, that was a clever, clever trick to not have to explain anything. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, it mentions it in the game manual as well. Um, right, but... manual. We still had manuals at that at that time. Yeah, I was, and they have a the the Prima's official hint book. There's no strategy right. guide for the game, but there's a little hint book. 
And now we have people like you, Landon. <laughs> Here's Zorana. Cool. I remember that one. Just climb up. And you control uh, Sister Demon, right? Do you have a... <laughs> Is that the name that you gave her? No, no, no. I'm, I'm trying to remember. But, so, like, as a developer, you usually spend an obscene amount of time on a very small part of the game. Like, something that's really hard to pull off, something that's really tricky. I spend a lot of time getting this thing to work. Uh, controlling a separate character because we don't do that anywhere in the, else in the game so it needed a lot of extra hands-on code and, and stuff so that's awesome yeah there's so many stupid ideas in this game that actually made it into the game as you said we weren't smart enough to cut content we worked or, ourselves or, yeah. instead. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh i have this amazing idea i want to see it i want to see it yeah <laughs> Do that. And... Another big uh, uh, design uh, conflict was regarding coins in the game. Oh, yeah? Uh, so there's a fixed amount of coin, fixed amount of gold in the whole game. Yep. And a, lot, a lot of people didn't like that uh, because they wanted to be able to replay a level, get more gold, to basically give it some sort of auto balancing. You could grind the previous level to, to get more gold. Uh, to buy better equipment, but I really like the the completionist idea. I still do that with all the games that I work on. I I like being able to hundred percent the game and find all the things. So you yeah. have this weird design where you can go back and and pick up the gold you didn't pick up first time, but at the same time, the gold that you did pick up first time is still gonna be there because otherwise it would feel empty, and it's just a little bit weird, but it kind of works still. <laughs> Just getting all the gold becomes a, a meta goal for yeah for the player. Yeah, I I'm I'm fine with the way that it's it's uh all set up. Kind of missed that right there. Two bomb. Oh dang it! Sometimes you can kill the lich in that one hit right there. Okay, now we got all three keys. Boom. There's a few cute tricks you can do in this level. Um, like, you don't need to raise that gate there. You can squeeze through uh, the sides of it, but it's very dangerous on the way back. Um, Sorry, my mother is calling me. Okay, I'm no problem. Mute for a bit. No problem. So. I don't remember this level at all. Kamzara. Yeah. <laughs> so you get to this part where you start to give him all the keys and then. He will All always right. say after you hand him the third piece. Well, well, well. <laughs> exactly. Uh. So that's turned into a meme. Is you always have to say that when, <laughs> when you hand, hand the third piece of the key in. False crouch under here, and then let me show you uh, another trick that we do. You wait right here. Before the guy spawns, wait for Zale to come down because he can be a little tricky. And now this guy spawns and we can kill him. Oh, come on. Oh, this is awful. Okay, and then Zale will go into his... Zale, come on. Zale, you're making me look bad. There you go. So Zale goes into his spot. This gate should be closed, but because we false crouched under it um, and we went oh. forward so quickly... Is the skeleton gonna kill him? Oh no, okay. <laughs> Zale, Zale likes to die and actually uh, one bug is that his health is not showing here. Um, so that's a little bit of a bummer. Also, we like to die here to advance time, but I think I may have missed the mark. So yeah, you just kind of stand back right here. Quickly come with me, Quickly come with me he says, and then uh, he reaches there, the door closes, and uh, you beat the level. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so now we get to the most uh, hated level uh, by the casual players, which is the Jacindra level. This is the longest level playing casually and in any, any case. Um, I'm going to try it with no armor. 
And this is the one that had a checkpoint, you said? Yeah, this, this, it does in, uh, in Xbox, yeah, this, and it yeah. has it for the Mordessa fights. Um, so I guess we, we knew this was particularly hard. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Did I do like a spiral skybox for this one? There was, okay. yeah, one of the questions we actually had in chat is who, uh, whose idea was the infinite staircase? I don't know. Is there an infinite staircase? Oh, yeah, there is. There is. We'll, we kind of rush right through it. Oh, this is the one you're going up, up, up. Oh, come on. These skeletons are the worst. They can get in your way, and we got, we got archers up there now. If you look at the... <sighs> oh. <laughs> I hate this level. Well, that's what happens when you have no armor. Can you look at the sky real quick here in the beginning? Yeah. Yeah. This. this yeah, thing that was, one was so nice. Yeah. Was, uh, oh my God. Using our oh. weird surface system. No, I didn't. <laughs> oh, good job. So, um, if you look at the bricks in this castle, there's a lot of little sculptures and stuff. He doesn't have time to look at bricks. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, for, for the benefit of the viewer, uh, there are a lot of uh, little sculptures and things in the bricks. It's a lot of weird uh, looks here going on. And uh, that was actually from photographs of uh, the, this cathedral in Barcelona, Sagrada de Familia. Really? Uh, Gaudi. Gaudis, yeah, yeah, that um, one, the spiky so I, church. Yeah, so I st well, if you have to look more on the wall, you kind of across the, on the, no, no, kind of back up and look to the, yeah, there. Okay, let's, let's yeah, take. Yeah, the, these bricks here, no, the, the square bricks there, oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, He's got a mind of his own. This stuff, I think, is from Uppsala Cathedral, but uh, these things here. But okay. the other bricks to the left, where, where you see this stuff, yeah. Uh -huh. This is some other familiar things that I've kind of combined with other bricks. Nice. Yeah, it, it's... And it looks like this is totally mistextured, this door, but it's actually supposed to look kind of wonky like that. <laughs> oh, I see That's what you're saying. on purpose. <laughs> and then get out before the door closes good try not to get hit by the berserkers because they basically kill you and now I've really messed myself up yeah now we got skeletons okay oh <laughs> that was rough and now we get into the uh, the, the lich room. It. Now we get into the lich room. This is so harsh. That was they they both decided to summon, and so that made it easy. Um, and now we get into the waiting room. Call it the waiting room because oh good, she can shoot us in the face, and it can advance time. Yeah, but you basically this just have to wait. Is a new exploit you have found? Yeah, there we go. And then you spam enter, and now two seconds have advanced in the time. And the door closes, but uh, yeah, that's a nice little nice little tidbit. And now we wait for the sound of the assassin preparing an arrow. There it is. Boom. Now we can continue. Oh, jeez, this guy never gets in our way. There's a lot that's of firsts dark, happening. Man. Very dark level. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But so it's, we're it's hated by the casuals because it's too difficult. It's too is it's a very difficult level, yeah. Yeah. But it's like That's... the last level or something. Oh, there's Vitar. Yeah, yeah. But it's nice. The end of the game. Jump over his head. It's long. It is, yeah. It's a very long level. 
And so when you're playing this on hard and you die, then it's a lot lost. So this is where Mordessa <laughs> says, you'll never get me, and then you get her, and you get a f ahead of her in the race. <laughs> and now this is the infinite staircase right here. This just goes up forever and ever, but you hit this button right here, and then it is no longer an infinite staircase. Oh, Jesus. Fuck, that's brutal. Yep. Wow. That must be pretty hard to pull off. <laughs> By going up the staircase? No, just creating an infinite staircase in this engine. Technically difficult, yeah. It just uh, warps fast. you to a different point. Oh yeah, don't attack her. So this is, this is what you do and this is why you play on easy. You stand on top of this checkpoint and then you just let her kill you over and over because there is no way around uh, Princess Jacindra slowly descending towards the bottom. If you kill Mordessa right now, it will make no difference in the speed at which she descends. And so to to go quicker, we just keep dying over and over, and we keep advancing the in-game time by two seconds Aww. each time we do it. And uh, then, yep. And so you can take a look at where she's at, or you can look at uh, wait for the sound cues that she has. Uh, like she says, why you twit? And then that's kind of telling you, okay, um, now you want to actually uh, go down and See? kind of wait. This is why we developers don't put in checkpoints into games. Oh, yeah? They can be exploited. <laughs> yeah. By evil players. <laughs> that's very cool. Yep, so that that's a fun that one. Intended way of using checkpoints, no? Okay, and that's how you beat the level. Now we nice. get to Vatar, and Jens Mates, I. You haven't seen the trick with Vatar. Um, to help prove a point, I'm going to do something first. I'm going to give myself absolutely no equipment. No potions, nothing. And I'm going to beat Vitar. It's gonna blow your mind. Okay. This is the guy you voiced. So there's big old Vitar. Oh yeah. You're just gonna run right past him, up here, stand on these two tiles, look at that torch, and then he's gonna spawn up. There's the sound cue. There he is, we drop down into the teleporter, and he's dead. <laughs> Telefrag. That's the word. Telefrag. That's awesome. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> we beat the game. That's that's the word that you call it. Is a telefrag? Yeah. And and I looked at your video, and you're absolutely right. This was a remnant from from the multiplayer roots uh, of us using teleporters, playing a lot of Quake. Uh, when you teleported in, into someone, you disintegrated them. It was a way of killing stuff, and that, you know, was the basis of how we set up characters in the game, both enemies and players alike. Wow. Okay. Yes. So in the original Quake, if you do that, someone so someone has just teleported, and you teleport into their where they're standing, into their bounding box, then they get fragged, and on the screen, I think it says telefragged. I'm not 100%. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't seem to recall that. Hey, guys, how about That's we do awesome. a, another giveaway at this point? It's been a bit since we've done a giveaway. And so I'm going to refresh and. And I'm uh, going to have a bathroom break while you. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be good. Yeah. If you guys need bathroom breaks, then we'll do this. Uh, We'll do this giveaway now. Okay, so for everyone in chat, again, uh, I will reach out if you if you win the uh, the giveaway. Uh, we'll have Ziggurat Interactive get in touch with you when they complete uh, the the game. So uh, we'll have the keyword again is going to be Enclave. E N C L A V E. I'm going to put that into chat. Just entering in that keyword, and then you will be entered for the giveaway. Excellent stuff. So we'll let that go for a little bit.
Oh, hope you guys are enjoying the stream. This has uh, been very eye-opening. Um, like that detail about the boat? I had no idea. That's incredible. And uh, I, I have been reading some of the chat, and I'm I'm uh, trying to to wait for the right time to ask some of the questions that uh, you guys um, might have. And uh, thank you to my mods for for sending over uh, the questions that you guys have been asking, so I don't lose track of them. Um, very much appreciated. So I think that what it might end up being is uh, we go through the dark campaign. Acrol is in chat. Acrol, we're going to get to show off your skip. Um, among a few other things, I think they might really appreciate what you can do on uh, <laughs> on level three. Um, so that will, that will be something. Okay, I'm going to give this one more minute and then we will do the roll. Um, oh, uh, Enigma, do you, I, I don't know if you wanted to, uh, enter the giveaway. It would just be exclamation points enclave if you wanted it. And nice to see the different insights. Yeah. These guys are, these guys are the real deal. They've, they've started their own companies. They've been working on AAA games forever. This, this is a real treat. They've been on TV a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, very exciting. Okay. Gonna end it in five, four, three, two, one, kaboom. Crystal Death has won the giveaway. Congratulations to you. Um you're on the you're on the uh, Enclave Discord server, and so I will uh reach out to you, Crystal Death. Crystal Death has uh It's the same crystal, right? Let's see. Looking at the speed run. Light side. Crystal Death. Yep. Uh huh. Yeah. So, yep. This Crystal Death. Yeah. It has the uh, third place for speed running the light side of Enclave with 32 minutes and 20 seconds. So, I will reach out to you, uh, Crystal, and we'll get that taken care of. Congrats to you. Jens is back. Well, yeah. Welcome back. So, uh, we were going to do the dark campaign. There's some more fun exploits that we can uh, show off. Um, and, uh, I think you might really like it, but, uh, yeah. Wow. Thanks for the insight on the, uh, telefrag. I had, I had no idea if it was just like <laughs> the, because a lot of times what you see in the console is, um, oh boy, I have no idea what that's about, but, uh, it uses the term like, like, it's like a system overload zonking it as like one of a, uh, a console, <laughs> It's not meant to be read by by players, I guess. Zonking it. <laughs> How did yeah, that I think come that's to a be? Ma Magnus term. <laughs> it is zonking, guys. Zonking, zonking stuff. Yeah. No, it. You know, this game came together very quickly in the end, and it's basically strung together with pieces of tape. <laughs> uh, it was it was a miracle that we managed to get it out at all yeah. at the time it really was uh yeah. and and as matt is say we learned so much by doing it like there's one thing developing vi developing video games but just you know making everything fit together in the end it's 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 another thing and and you yeah it's just very hard and and figuring out how to do that takes a lot of energy mm -hmm. What's supposed to be in the in the ground there? Is it supposed to be like bugs or, or what? Yes, bugs. Got it. Uh, sorry, I and this is one of those. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you. Yep. Yeah. But you can't see me for some reason. Is that that is uh, correct. I think you need to click on the webcam button again. No, he's. I'll turn him off and on again. Hold on. Oh, what the heck? I guess it might be not be uh, detecting it or. Something. It took me 30 seconds before my feed showed up. Oh. Huh. Maybe wait. Oh, okay. Anyway, uh, this is one of those where I. There we go. Where, when I did the cameras for for this scene, it would crash on save all the time. This this was the real 
brain destroyer. This scene. <laughs> Got it. So this first one, I have to be very particular on when I uh, start the level, when I press enter because of these bars right here. They, they, I have to wait for a very particular moment to start running. So when I get to those bars, I can basically run right through them. I don't know if you saw me do that. It's like, we yeah, can have the bars supposed to do that, right? just like this. And I can just run right through them <laughs> because of oh. the false crouch thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So nice. that's, uh, that's been a fun thing. And that's why I go for the knife on this level. Same thing here, I run right under those bars and I'm able to get to the door sooner. Um, and you get to this spot, jump here. Also, uh, there's kind of like a bunny hop mechanic, I'm, I'm not sure, but like if you press space while you're already in the air and then you land, oh geez, I missed it. That is the ultimate run ender. This right here, this torch right here <laughs> is the ultimate run ender. You're supposed to jump right on top of it. I'm gonna try it again, I'm gonna try it again. There we go. Just like that. Nice. So you um, jump right nice. on top and of the it, elevator. And how much do you save by doing that? Um, couple, like two to Who three cares? seconds. Doesn't matter if it's point it one looks second, cool. it's still worth it. I might die. I'm just gonna do that as a safety strat. This is a miserable time, I'm not even gonna. <laughs> Okay, and then you jump right in between here. Come on. And that's basically it. So this level Man. right here has like the least amount of uh, RNG. It has no enemies. And so this is probably like one of the only levels that can be tasked. I uh, have a tool assisted speed run, mm. run through it. Because otherwise you're just bumping into enemies all the time and it's very tricky. But um yeah, that's I've I've run I've literally run through that level over two thousand times. Um, and uh, that's incredible. Over thirteen years of records on that level, uh, we were able to reduce it by one second through that spread. <laughs> so it used to be like a minute sixteen, and now we got it to a minute fifteen, something like that. Uh, do you see now I has to jump on the torch? That's it. Yeah. Yes, I do. That's why you gotta jump on the torch. Okay. Curious. So this level right here is a very quick one. Um, of course, if you're doing 100%, then there's a lot more to it. I can just nudge myself in right here and not get hit by the explosion, but if I went any further to the left, then I would totally die. Casual headshot nice. on that guy. Marcus says help. He jumped down here into the sewer shot. Boom, and he's dead. <laughs> and uh, then you can just go out and beat the level. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh, just like that. And done. <laughs> nice. That's a fun one. Okay. This one you guys are gonna love. Oh, there's gonna be a moment where your jaws drop. You're gonna love it. Okay. Let's see, let's do that. Just need that, that's fine. So this is the other side of Arkmore. Just gotta pass those two candles right there and then the boat outside gets started on moving. So yeah, same level as everything. Got these two guys that rush you, and now there is a, a boat approaching, and you have really no control over it. It's really being in the right place at the right time as the boat moves around. I don't know why I'm calling it boats. They're more like an airship. Boom. Oh, come oh, yeah. on. That arrow so totally hit. Can we talk about the hitboxes, please? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm sure there's some bugs with the hitboxes too. Might be something prediction related. Oh, I actually need to get a stopwatch oh, for this. 
uh, stopwatch right here. Okay, so it gets right here, and two guys jump out. Oh, they actually survived. One of them died. Usually both of them jump out and die. Now I wait for it to back out. Boom, and I got a stopwatch set for 29 and a half seconds. I go out and I fetch this man right here. And he starts to chase me. I go down here. Kill this man here. And there's this bar right here that I just need to be standing behind in order to help the airship get to its next spot. So I wait for the timer to get to 29 and a half, 27, 28, 29 and a half. And now the boat outside has started moving into its third spot. I can head out here. Uh, this guy, we have him follow us up. Make sure he doesn't jump too much. And here you go, guys. Jump on top of him and jump off the castle. Nice. Boom. Just like that. And now... We are in the final part of the game, of the stage. <laughs> you didn't have to go through the, <laughs> through the castle at all. That's amazing. Incredible. Yep. So this was, uh, we're, to give credit where credit's due, this was uh, found by uh, a guy called The Void back in 2008. Um, and I don't know, seeing the stuff that he did is one of the reasons I got into uh, the speedrunning later on. That's amazing. Yep, so that's uh, what this level is all about. It still takes about uh, two minutes to get through um, with all the exploits involved. Now we wait for our friend here. That's it. Boom, and now we jump into the lava. The propeller on the airship is moving. That's kind of it. Wow. So, Mansion of Dreams is next. It's also a, a pretty tricky stage. I uh, like this level. This one I remember fondly. The, yeah, let's talk about the Mansion Fondly. of Dreams. I'm sure that you guys yeah. might have some things to mention oh, yeah. about this house. Yeah, this one is cool. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, there's artwork inside the house here. Um, that's Tom Fritzon's. Uh, uh, if you go back to that, yeah. yep, I, I saw the the signature. He's got it like a Tolkien-esque signature right there. Yeah, but, but the cool the cool thing is that it spells out Tom. He's very good at these symbol things. Yeah, yeah. So, so the arms up there is a T, and then the belly is the O, and then the legs and the makes an M. Okay. <laughs> I get it. Oh, these are all by Tom, I think. Oh, there's the, uh, there's the Guardian level. This was used a lot in, uh, promo material for showing, like, the light side castle or something like that. Um. um. Yep. I'm sorry, were, were you going to say something? No, I'm just gotcha. uh, marveling at this level. It's, I think Yank built this level. Yeah. Sure. I really like this level. Really cool. So yeah, came together nice. Let me see. Do they? Do they? Have they? Oh, they render when you get close enough. Okay. So we start out here, and then this guy jumps up. Boom! Oh, dang it! You can hit that guy. I don't know what's up with the other two. Okay, so now you get into this trap section with the goblin, and he's got a key, and all we care about is picking up the key, so we just kill the goblin and take his key. And that allows us to go up into the mansion. These guys did not trigger. I think it was because I was doing that flying around with no clip. And we open that with the key. Pick up the spiral key right here. And now we do a similar trick to what we just did in the last level, which is boom, like that. Take no damage when we fall. Nice. Yep. Otherwise, that that would kill you. Pull out the knife for another false crouch. Just very casual going under the door when it opens up like that. And then we prepare some uh, stuff for this final fight. Boom. That was very smooth. Nice. Usually it doesn't go that quickly. And then we get down here and we get to a book with a bunch of faces on it. 
Any comment uh, on these faces here? <laughs> Basically. Yup. Oh, wow. Some of, I know that they're all probably sorcery images, but I haven't seen those ones. Okay, and now we get to uh, the Guardian, which I'm not particularly happy about because he is... The dragon has uh, RNG to him. And actually, I should be able to... Whatever. He's got no armor. I thought I had... Maybe I was missing... Are you going armor... Free again? Yeah, yeah, I am. I, I forget what I... I might have missed something, but... Uh, no, I, I should be fine. I'm fine. Oh, it was for the, the hard run. Run through here. Boom. Those orbs have uh, health on them. It takes two hits to... Uh, come on. To uh, destroy them in hard. But only just one in easy. Just like that. Wasn't there some level, yes, where we ran out of memory or something and we had to convert all characters to the most heavily armored one to save memory yeah, or that, something? Yeah, Jim, Jim Shaleen mentioned that uh, when we talked about Enclave, uh, part of the reason why things got so difficult, like we have these variations of the different characters, like different levels of the enemies. But each one, of, like each variation we use of them, cost extra memory. And by the end, they were trying to just get it to work on on the Xbox with its limited memory, and realized we had to strip down variations. And of course, they pick the the hardest difficulty character to, to because they look cooler. <laughs> they looked cooler and removed <laughs> the easy characters. And this was done sort of after QA had done everything and after like the, the very limited balancing efforts we did just to get the game to not crash. So suddenly there we introduced a huge difficulty spike <laughs> yep. to save memory. Oh, the night crawlers here. It's so scary. And then if you have to heal, then you have to sacrifice your vision. <laughs> oh! Good job, you got through it. That is ve that's very difficult. <laughs> I actually have a, a video compilation of when I was doing runs for hard difficulty on this. Uh, is all of the deaths that I had over the span of one week. And, um... Just one after another, just all these little clips of me dying and saying the F word and all that. And I have a little counter of uh, all the different things that were happening and all the different like attributions of the death. And then also an F word counter. So <laughs> now we get into the plateau where we need to give ourselves it a shield. It must take a while. It must take a while to make this video. Uh, it did. It did. Yeah. It was, uh, it was no joke. So now he gets to the level that Jens Mathes oh. works on. Yeah, this one I built. And it's faster to swim than take the... Yeah. Well, you also don't bump into guys as much. I am. Yeah, that's one of the, the main things is that the guys, the AI moves however it wants. And so, come on. I'm actually going to safety strat right here. Get the checkpoint. Just in case something goes terribly wrong. Even though this is a very short level, it only takes a minute to beat it. Oh my gosh. That was almost it. Okay, and then we get the poison bolts. We stand right behind here for the druid who spawns, and you can get a free headshot on her just like that. Nice. Just like that. Poison bolts are one of my favorite things in this game. They do so much damage, and then they have the dot afterwards. <laughs> There's so much stuff in this game, like all the equipment and all the characters you can play and all that stuff. Yeah. 
it still surprises me how much of this we managed to get in there. Yeah. So now we get into capture Jacindra. And this part right here, all the enemies can bunch together in that doorway and really make life difficult. <laughs> but they decided to be very nice to me. Let's go right around them. Opens to the left, opens to the right. Doors. Of course. And we head in here. Uh, so, I really like this outdoor area. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, I think I built that bridge, dude. Let's take a look at the bridge. Yeah, it's it's a very scenic area. I really like it. I, I have a. Yeah, uh, I took a I little video like for this. Falling stream. leaves. As yeah, well. the falling leaves was a nice thing. We all marveled at once that it got, in, got into the game. It's like just very yeah. nice. Oh yeah. Beautiful. It's... And nice looking waterfall as well. Yep. And then you always have this problem that you have to block the player from running out of the map. I don't yeah. know how this forest is doing that, but I'm sure it doesn't look good if you just uh, head towards the edge. You can jump, go right through this door. That door has no physics on it. You can pick her up while she's still there. Uh -huh. yep. You picked up. And that's it. That's capturing Jacindra. And then she nice. gets uh, sacrificed to Vitar. The massive. Yes. <laughs> Rat. <laughs> See, okay, this is outpost siege, and so now this is where we get to show off a little thing called the Acheril skip. I'm not sure if you've seen this one, but uh, this was found out by one of the members in the community named Acheril, and. Um, it just skips past the entire freaking level. It's amazing. So you have to start out by blowing the door first, because as soon as you blow the door, then the uh, the siege tower starts moving. And um, those are the two turrets. Uh, also, a fun thing that you can do, and I might try, is uh, you can climb up to that port without even needing to use the uh, the siege tower. You can just, uh, you use the false crouch stance and you, you jump up the side of the bridge in a very particular ma manner. And uh, you're able to just beat and not have to wait for the siege tower. But, uh, I will still go through here and pick up the diamond, which we got right there. Just marveling at all of these clever tricks. You're gonna love this one. Okay, so I take out the crossbow because that gives us a static um, crosshair that we can work with and use for setting up different positioning. So we're not gonna jump across there. We're gonna nuzzle ourselves right up there. Gotta try it again. Ooh. Jump like that. Now we jump up here in up top the arch <laughs> and now we have we're about right here which is good positioning maybe a little bit higher and then we take a look out over here there's a little crack in the rocks right there and a little blob and so we have the cursor right here so we jump forward and then we're gonna hug the wall as soon as we get past this beam just like that so now <laughs> now nice. we're at this spot right here and to show you what that did, usually you have to go through here, boom, there's a bunch of guys here, they, they sling a catapult at you, you beat them up, you run through here, there's more guys, you beat them up, get here, they blow the door, you save the lich, there's uh, three guys you kill, then three wizards you kill, and then uh, your alter ego comes out here uh, from, the, from the light side, you take the key, run back here, there's a wizard, um, you open the door, and then you get here. And you just skip it all instead with that skip. And when you come in this way, there's a sniper that spawns up here. But because you never get to that trigger area, she's not there. Don't have to worry about it. Then you just continue on through the level. You don't, nice. you don't have to kill anyone. That's, that's one of the best things. And so, like, 
I don't really need the best uh, axe and weapon and all that. Um, when I did this on hard difficulty, I had... I, I think I could just use even, like, the, the level 1 starter axe. And, um, <laughs> that's it. Boom. That's awesome. But that's the acreal skip. That is, uh, something that we really appreciate. And then, same as before, you just drop down here instead of having to go all the way back down and you beat the level <laughs> incredible good job i i had a memory about that capturing yasinra thing because i think we struggled for a long time trying to figure out how we're gonna carry her oh and, you just turned her into some a... carrying oh, animation yeah. or something you were thinking of actually having um, her hoisted up on, on on your shoulders or something yeah that that's like uh, that of course makes sense you're, <laughs> you're going to kidnap someone right so you have to pick them up and are we going to do a completely new idea yeah. set for this it was huge debate and then someone just came up with the idea just to make her the inventory make her yeah item for the inventory <laughs> yeah exactly Exactly. Okay, uh, which one was I on? Oh yeah, I actually need to have a good equipment for this. Okay, so the Shatter Axe, the Thorn Shield has no difference between it and the, and the Ancient Scutum. It just costs less, so we, of course, elect for the Thorn Shield. Uh, can I have the Heavy Bolt? Let's see. That's fine. Four Heavy, yeah, sure, whatever. It's good. Okay. And so we start with a false oh, crouch. This is one of those levels that had no gameplay when we had three weeks to go. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So I am in the false crouch stance. Boom. And then you just jump right through the, the hole. And you see me kind of glitching out as well. Nice. Um, I'm going to show off this one trick if I'm able to pull it off. Usually, you just die almost instantly to this guy right here, so I'm just gonna kill him. Come on. There we go. So you climb up this ladder towards the turrets here, and then the, uh, the way to get best timing on this level is to jump across there, which takes another kind of like a wall hug situation. There we go, first try, nice. And you just drop in right here, and uh, you don't need to go into a room. You don't need to pick up a key. You don't need to do a lot of stuff. You just continue on through. Boom, like that. That guy with a big hammer can totally ruin your day. Yeah, you see, we didn't need to pick up that key, and everything's already open for us. <laughs> and uh, now all that we have to do is pick up this key. This opens up the room to Commander Eric. Nice. Got out there before the doors closed, and now we hope we don't get sniped. I the wish we would have had Junkan or Janne here on this stream. We yeah, could actually we talk about the scripting nightmares that went into trying to prevent this kind of stuff from happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So on hard difficulty, you're actually able to pull him out of the room because there is no checkpoint. Um, but you have to fight him in here. But a Acril did kind of find a skip to get past it. But uh, that's it. That's You kill Commander Eric, you exit his room, and then that's it. Beautiful. All right. You guys ready for another uh, crazy trick? You Hell may yeah. have seen it in the, the run that I did. We are actually going to play as the slowest character which is the Lich. And uh, just give her the starting starting staff, the Staff of the Damned. And that's all we need. So this is the, the Lich skip in Unguard Mines. You don't need to kill a single guy. You just need to survive on your way up to the final room. Usually, you're going around collecting pieces of a bomb and putting them together. Uh, and then you assemble them, you put them in a cart, and you blow up this bridge here. Um, and then a team spawns with a gnome that drops a key, and the key lets you go into a spooky tunnel. Um, but we found out that if you find a way to jump up on top of a uh, tunnel entrance, then you can bypass the entire thing. So I'm not going to pick up a key 
I'm not going to pick up parts of a bomb. I'm just going to continue on. Let's see. And there's the uh, lit shield, of course, making life easy. So I am going to summon a skeleton, right like that, jump on his head, and then we're through. Right, of course. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and uh, now we're near the end of the level. I'm happy this went through so, so smoothly. I got the acre skip first try. I got this first try. So, is it? Stop. Is, the is new that, portal. Yeah. Is this the level where there's two portals? Yeah. Or yep. That's that's another one of my evil things. Yeah. Where you die yeah. if you choose the Mordasa one, right? Yeah. So you, we condition the player to use the same portal at the end of every map. And then suddenly, at the very end of a very hard map, there's... You're not supposed to go into her portal. You're supposed to pass it and go into the other portal. And uh, that's just very evil. So tell me about voicing Vitar. <laughs> uh, yeah, just, just make, make monster noises. Possible. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've done that in a couple of games, actually. I've done some super soldiers for yeah. the first time. And now we get to... Uh... Mordessa, not the Lich, for, playing as a goblin. For Riddick, I think I did a PA announcer. Uh, maybe some other thing, I don't remember. It's usually kind of when you're very, it's very late in development and no one has thought of recording something. And no one really cares about the <laughs> exactly. right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just you just want done. the problems to go away. Yeah. <laughs> That's when you can do all these Easter eggs or hijacking voice overs or that was a very introducing smooth. new levels. Yeah. What'd you say, Landon? Oh, I just said that was a very smooth kill on uh, Mordessa right there. Oh, nice. I wasn't a fan of that big Batar portal early on, no. but it has grown no. on me in the last 20 really? years. <laughs> yeah. Everybody hated it. I, yeah, I know. Uh, I take full full responsibility it's for it. It's the monolith. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. Now I get to show you how you beat this level as the Lich. It's super fun. And it's the reason that uh, the Lich is in the thumbnail for uh, the world record for this level. Um, but basically, you're able to, with our dark ravens or crows or whatever, you're able to uh, shoot through a lot of things. It ignores a lot of physics. Um, so we don't have to fight the assembly guards at the end. Uh, we can just straight up shoot at uh, the queen and kill her that way. Oh, come on. Get out of there. A lot of times this, this guy likes to just the, jump off. I think, the, I think this is the last level that was built for the game. I'm oh, especially boy. happy with the ground textures in this one. Usually they don't follow me like this. Gotta kill this guy to make it a little smoother. Okay. And then we enter in here and we get to the final battle. Start off by boom right there. There is the queen dead. That's not and we just happen. killed her. <laughs> She's dead. We beat the game. Yay! <laughs> wow. So you can do that with a lich only? Yeah. That's sort of... So it, it's it's hard sitting here as a developer and seeing you find all these bugs and exploits, and my mind instantly goes to how could we prevent that? <laughs> like Twenty years ago, I feel I feel frustrated about these bugs in the game. And let me tell you, if Ziggurat Interactive is watching, don't fix those bugs. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh. it, it's it's one of the burdens you need to shoulder as a developer. You need to to support those bugs in future versions as well. Yeah, so and they have. Here. They haven't in the yeah. Wii version. They they still exist in the Wii. So I just shot her like that, and then she just teleports down here, and I just need to angle the shot right here. <laughs> like that, and wow. then you can... And then she's dead. Nice. Just like that. <laughs> hey, can you go back to that level that had had that puzzle in the floor where you have to step on some plates in the right yeah. order? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Also, I have to open up the console because it uh, never gets past when I beat the game. I have to open up the console in order for it to uh, continue on. Okay, <laughs> deserted temple. Let's get to give her some stuff. I think this is the level where I'm I'm going to I'm going to make yes very happy, but I'm not sure you it's this one. By we'll see. There is an Easter egg in this level where you have the ghosts. Oh yeah? Yeah, you have to uh or no, you don't you hit there. Let's see, where is it? Boom, like that. That crumbles that. So you destroy the cross, and then you just knock on this door seven times. And then a bunch of ghosts appear. There they are. How did you figure that out? It's the community found it a while ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I I'm guessing is the, the marriage proposal one something like that where you have to kill a thing? Oh, and stop, then... stop here, stop here. And yep. look down on the floor. Oh, yeah, yep. See, see that, yes, Oh, yeah. Reusing awesome. content. <laughs> Uh, Reusing uh, uh, content. Uh, uh, so it was okay. well worth the three days I spent <laughs> to make a metal nice. version of it. Too. I think that there was a spot in the dark campaign that also used it. I f oh. I'm not yeah, sure. It could very well be. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this is a fun level. I, I, it's 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 a nice little area. It's very classic rpg just go in and raid the raid the temple rob the tomb this is this level is awesome i don't know why this windows are boarded up there but these ones are not it's kind uh, of i guarantee it's to reduce frame or improve frame rate oh uh, yeah probably. because it you have to remember that the computers were real slow back then so the more <laughs> Like, when you're here, you don't really see anything else, so it's fine to see inside, but when you're outside there in the beginning, that's probably very expensive. That's what I would imagine. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, no, I think that's true. Uh, did you also catch that this door has uh, no physics on it when you start opening it? No. That was the, Yeah, that was the other thing. So I grabbed You are the... not meant to get there that quickly. Well, no, here's <laughs> the thing. I just open it, and then as it starts to go up... Boom. I just go right through. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh yeah. Badly yeah. scripted. Badly scripted, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, cool. Well, we ran through the entire game. That's that's all the that's levels. Amazing. We well, speed it's ran so through fun all. to see all this stuff. Wow. Yeah, amazing to see everything again. Here we are back to the chat screen. And uh, let's see. There we go. It's showing the skybox that uh, that you made yeah. for Arkmore. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, this one, I had to ask someone to render those uh, a particle in circles. And then I could put them together and kind of fix the colors. And, <laughs> Lazy and there Bird was a way a where... Sorry? Um... The question from chat, how do you deal with the fact that people just want to destroy your game just to finish it quickly? <laughs> <laughs> I I really love the speed running stuff in video games. Like it it's not great when you guys find bugs that we feel breaks the game, but as long as it doesn't impact, you know, casual players, players who just want to experience the game as it is meant to be experienced then that's awesome and and seeing all this creativity and all those ways that 
you are misusing the game. That's <laughs> that's really inspiring, actually. Uh, yeah, yeah, makes... because it sort of speaks to the whole hacker ethos as well that mm -hmm. I think all computer nerds are are enjoy. Like you're, it's like you know you're kind of hacking the matrix in a way. Like <laughs> you're not supposed to do this, I mean. but it's possible. The impossible is possible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, but it's also I, I so think... hard. It's so hard to know when you're developing the game. Like you can have these ideas, like oh, like the rocket launcher in Quake was one of the things that we kept kept coming back to when talking about this stuff. Like giving you the player a tool that we know can be misused, uh, but it's so fun, so we want to encourage it and maybe have a few secrets on it. But at the same time, we know we can't really control what people do with it. Like it, it's this kind of danger game you're playing with a. Uh, with yourself because you are creating a ton of work because it's going to come back and eat you uh, during the QA phase and you want to fix those bugs so you don't the game doesn't crash or you get uh, soft locked or whatever uh, but at the same time you want to give the player as much freedom and, and creativity as possible so it's 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 a weird balance yeah and, and you get emergent gameplay by doing those things or allowing for them um, but I still remember the first time I saw what I believe to be the first speedrun, which I think was Quake Done Quick back in the day. Yeah, yep. And I was just so totally blown away by it. Like, holy shit, this is possible. Because I had played that single play campaign many times. And and they were doing this totally ridiculous things. Like, you know, throwing a grenade a certain way to be able to jump. And then when it blasts, they're in midair and they get pushed this other way and they enter something. It's just incredible because it's this combination of being super clever and uh, using the tools of the game uh, very expertly. Like, like you have to be extremely good to be able to pull off those maneuvers. And so that's cool. But you still want it to be fair in some way. Like you want it to be like you want the game to hold up to those kinds of exploits. So see you clipping through a door. That's that's always a bit painful because it looks bad. Did you see that oh. guy who did the code injection in Super Mario Brothers by jumping in the right spots? Or I whatever? saw yeah. that. That was inc and so he so beat the game like in like the, three minutes or something. That was like the ultimate mind fuck. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's really next level stuff. <laughs> yep. Just rearranging the bits in the in the program. Yeah, they, something similar in uh, the old uh, Pokemon games on Game Boy. And people yeah. creating their own uh, like coding engines and compilers just from rearranging all that, and then it's it's insane the stuff that yeah, that's people so cool. who who want to do something <laughs> cannot do that. So okay, so we're we're approaching three hours. I mentioned this would probably be a, a three hour stream or so. Um, I guess. Uh, if we wanted to, to, to start to conclude things I, first, this is an amazing experience uh, being with you guys and running through your game and uh, you, you revealing so much more uh, about what went into it. Um, is there anything that if you worked on like Enclave today, say that was like your project today, uh, would you do anything differently? Would you do... I don't Everything know. Everything would be different. Yeah. It would be a totally, totally different game. Like, totally different. But that's also know. what's cool about this, is that it's... It's who we... It's kind of indicative of who we were at that point in time. But I don't think anything would be similar if we did it today. Got it. Do I don't know. Like, there, there's tons of really cool ideas in there that... that that I think would be interesting to lift over and make a modern game around. Like the the chooses choose your class before each mission, having the parallel campaigns and all that kind of like there's a lot of good ideas that, that still fit. Um I'm not sure what kind of game it would be. Like at the same time you need to think like what what do people expect nowadays? People expect co-op or whatever. Like it's a very different world we live in, um, so you couldn't make the same thing. You would have to adapt. 
Right. I, I think, at least me personally, I think that's true for you too. We're just too different in how we approach the problems. Like, mm -hmm. like this, this game came out of just kind of, it's, it's very brute forced. Like everything in the game is just pushing, pushing, pushing until it's something exists and it's there. And it's just all of our cool ideas, put them together into something. But, um, I think if we and, did and, it today, we would do it so much more cohesive. Like most games, it's, it's, it's made by a weird constellation of team members. Like, and, okay. and as we've pointed out uh, many times during the stream, like some of these ideas are like a one person thing that they implemented late at night and, and it, it was allowed to stay in the game because no one really had had a complete vision for what it was. It's just the sum of, of everyone's ideas smashed into this kind of unformed yes. mess and, and then polished off all the bugs we can fix within the time frame and then ship it. Right. What's so interesting about that too is that, the, yeah, exactly what you're saying there is that the, the team itself isn't organized. Uh, so at this point in time, it's not like we had, you know, we had no art director, we had no game director, we had no audio director, we had none of these things. We it had was... no game designer, like a, 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 a traditional game, like no one was responsible for the game design of this game. Yeah, because this was at a point in time where those kind of formal hierarchies didn't really exist in game companies because the teams were so small. So, it, you know, people just did their thing, kind of. And that's very much what this game is about. It's just a bunch of people doing their thing and arguing and putting stuff in and, yeah, smashing it into something that <laughs> is playable. <laughs> but that's also what, what makes it special and cool, I think, like it's, it's yeah, it, it yeah, makes it sure. a very unique thing. Totally. Yeah, yeah because I, there's I would, not I a unified that. vision behind it. There but I, I guess that vision. that's the answer as well, like, today, we would approach it very differently, we would think like, what should this be, like, looking at it top down, what, what is this, what would Ankle be today, a, a modern reboot, what would that look like? What's the right. important? What's the what's the stakes? What's the promise? What's the everything? It would be yeah, interesting. We would, in we would think it through because in that day it was more of a negotiation. Like I want to do this thing, you can do that thing, and then both things are in the game. It's not like just stay out of my way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but what was really cool too was. Uh, kind of the power of Ogier, and I really have to credit you for this. Yes, yeah, so a lot of being able to make cool artwork is just having that powerful tool that could do so many cool things and do it so efficiently. And 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 you have the, it's, it's so cool to have a tool like that being developed in house because you can come up as a user, you can sit there, you can work with it and you can come up with an idea and, and say, okay, here's something that's always super annoying. Like when I paste something into the environment, it just ends up randomly somewhere. And then I have to move it, drag it over to where it needs to be. And you mentioned that to yes, and he's like, okay, well, why don't we I make it so that uh, there's a way you can paste the object into the same position as the original object. And then you just offset it from there. And that was like an insane time saver that none of the oh, other yeah. tools had at the time. Yeah, so that's very commonplace that in like, uh, just even like Photoshop now, just have it go to the same spot. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in a, in like a, in that kind of tool at that point in time, that was unheard of. And uh, so that were... Yeah, there and then there, there weren't really, there weren't any standardized tools for this stuff, especially for building, building games like you could. Some people tried to build levels and stuff in, in the 3D modeling packages, but it, was, it wasn't built for that. So everyone built their own stuff, which made the games very distinct and unique because of it. Like, you give the tools certain strengths and, 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 and features, and suddenly the, the game gets influenced by what, what you can do quickly and efficiently. Yeah. And what was, you had some texturing thing as well, where 
anyway, it was and that was a, a very great experience having that uh, well, the possibility I... of improving <laughs> the tools on the go. And with the benefits comes the the drawbacks, like crashing yeah. when you set up cutscene cameras and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, and then know. it's like, oh, I uh, before I went, you get an, you see an email, you come in and you see the email. I, I just updated, uh, I compiled a new version of Ogre and I started, and it crashes on boot, and and he's gone home to sleep. So then you're like, <laughs> yeah, that's what but, you get. But most of the time, it's amazing. Awesome. Um, okay, uh, I want to do one more giveaway with uh, the community. They said we could have uh, three giveaways, and so we'll just do one more. Um, and uh, as we're having everyone go through, and let me do the... It's the same keyword as uh, just exclamation point enclave. And... Um, so we'll have people enter that in. And uh, while that's happening, uh, any concluding words you guys would like to offer? Anything you'd like to, to, to discuss? I mean, how this I'm just uh, impacted super you. happy that you invited us for this and put this together. It's been so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> super cool to... Yeah. That people still care and to see everything that all the work you put into come up with these exploits that's just very fascinating and amazing Absolutely. i would imagine it's the kind of thing we dreamed about that people would be doing uh, and it's uh, pretty cool that it has happened yeah it's 19 years and uh your your product is still finding a way to be relevant that's pretty cool yeah i think i think we um after we released enclave I made a push of releasing the tools. That's what you mentioned earlier as well, like a public release of the Ogre tool and everything, sort of hoping to get something, some modding going and stuff like that. But it never really took off. And and Enclave was was a good game at its time, but it didn't really, it never became this hit that we wanted it to be. So we sort of moved on and then it's been in the backwater of our minds, I think. So seeing seeing that it's sort of, this seed was still planted and and, people are still playing it, it's really amazing to, to to experience this kind of stuff absolutely um okay so i think we got uh enough time into the giveaway so i'm going to roll the dice now boom and we got galaxy slayer as the final winner and i see you have a uh, aver avatar from uh freelancer that's one of my favorite games <laughs> oh that was an awesome. amazing open world sci-fi game okay i will uh i will reach out to you and we can and uh we'll, we'll coordinate that okay uh excellent so uh i think that that about wraps it up uh you guys can uh stay on after i end the stream and we'll just kind of do a de little deep briefing but uh, i want to thank uh the entire enclave community for um all of the the efforts and in in, uh, in in continuing to advance this game and continuing to curate everything together, uh, preserve a lot of the uh, videos, screenshots, and uh, understanding the technology from from back in the day, and us just uh, figuring out all these uh, little relics for ourselves, and now getting to to talk to the guys who actually put them together and and learning that that little. The little hidden gems, the, the hidden key that, uh, that that puts it all together. So uh, thank you again, uh, Jens and Jens, for, for being uh, with us today. And I uh, wish everybody have a, a great uh, af morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you may be in the world. We'll see and you happy guys. happy new year. And thank happy new year much. to you guys, too. Happy new year. We'll thank you. you very much. It's Indeed. been awesome. <laughs>